us to join us at the podium in the back for a special presentation by Council Member Sean Parker. Thank you, Council Member Suara. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, any council members who would like to join us in uh, reading a resolution uh, recognizing the East Nashville High School football team um, on their on their tremendous season. I'd also like to invite the uh, the team up here and thank y'all so much for coming out here and joining us today. Um, you can kind of just make your way uh, here into the frame. Thank you. This is you guys. Oh, yeah. We should have brought the side band. There you go. Yeah. Put that right there. There you go. Oh, wow. All right, here we go. It's a little. So let's see, we've got several council members. Are y'all willing to help me uh, read through this as we as we go? Okay, here we go. Um, whereas the 2021 East Nashville Eagles football team won the Region 5 3A Division Championship and made it past the second round of the playoffs for the first time in school history, and whereas the team went to the state championship game in Chattanooga, finishing a state runner-up with a 10-5 record, having defeated three teams which had one or fewer losses, and whereas the team loved to be doubted, which accelerated their bonding as a team. And whereas the team was led by 14 seniors who gave it their all every day, Carlito Archibald, Giselle Atkins, Elijah Brown, Jerry Campbell, Taylor Fletcher, Amarian Ford, Amarius Hyde, Cayman Overton, Lamonte Shute, Joseph Stewart, Demias Trotter, Damon Upchurch, Damon Webb, and Willie Wilson and um, Brett, would you, you come? Whereas senior running back Marion Ford won the William E. Hume Award given annually to the MNPS football player who best exemplifies sportsmanship, scholarship, and football ability. And whereas third. Team players were named to the all-region team. Lamonte Shute, Chazelle Atkins, Jerry Campbell, Damon Webb, Demias Trotter, Zach Beard, Frank Gordon, Amirius Hyde, Ladon Pointer, Malik Bowling, Willie Nelson, Cayman Overton, and Amarian Ford. And whereas three players were named to the 3A All-State team, Jerry Campbell, Frank Gordon, and Amarian Ford, and whereas running back coach Kelsey Fordham coached his first 2,000-yard running back, and... Go ahead. Whereas strength and conditioning coach Stephen Chambliss played a big part in helping the team stay healthy and accomplish so many accolades and whereas head coach Jamal Stewart was recognized as medium class coach of the year by 615 preps coach Stewart teaches kids more than being great football players he always teaches student athletes how to become young men now therefore be it resolved by the council of the metropolitan government of Davidson I'm sorry of Nashville and Davidson County uh, the Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing the East Nashville High School Eagles football team for their division championship and historic playoff run. The Metropolitan Council office is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution to be presented to head coach Jamal Stewart, whereas this resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Yeah, yeah. Get this to you and it is for Would you like to say anything? 
on, the, on behalf of East Nashville Football Program, we just like to thank you guys for allowing us to come here today. This is a special group of kids on the field and off the field. We're, we're truly going to miss them, and we're just thankful for what they did for our community and our program. Thank you again. Thank you, Council Member Parker, and congratulations to our regional champions. I'm up in Englewood. I've got. We're ready for another presentation, Council Member Hart. And uh, Stratford High. Yeah, that's why I went to. Stratford, watch. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. Madam Chair, it gives me great pleasure to present this resolution uh, to Tansy Hill, um, a resolution recognizing April 11 through April 17, 2022 as Black Maternal Health Week. Whereas the month of April is recognized in the United States as National Minority Health Month, a month-long initiative to advance health equity across the country on behalf of all racial and ethnic minorities. And whereas this year marks the fifth anniversary of the Black Maternal Health Week campaign, which is celebrated from April 11th to April 17th each year and was officially recognized by President Biden on April 13th, 2021 and whereas Black Maternal Health Week was founded and led by the Black Mamas Matter Alliance and you want me to keep reading? Whereas Black Maternal Health Week is a week of awareness, activism, and community building to deepen the conversation about Black maternal health in the United States, amplify community-driven policy, research, and care solution, center the voices of Black mothers, women, families, and stakeholders, provide a national platform of Black-led entities and efforts on maternal health, birth, and reproductive justice, and enhance community organizing on Black maternal health, and... Whereas, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, approximately 700 women die each year in the U.S. as a result of pregnancy or delivery complications, and whereas in 2020, black women were most disproportionately affected with a mortality rate of 55.3 deaths per 100,000 live births compared to 19.1 deaths per 100,000 live births and 18.2 deaths per 100,000 live births births for white and Hispanic women respectively, and whereas the U.S. has an infant mortality rate of 5.6 per 1,000 live births in 2019, with a health disparity among black babies at a rate of 10.8 deaths per 1,000 live births in 2018, and... Whereas black mothers are more likely to suffer from MPMAD, perinatal mood and anxiety disorders like postpartum depression in silence and without clinical help. And whereas the theme for 2022 is building for liberation, centering black mamas, black families, and black system of care. And... 
whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognize April 11th through April 17th, 2022 as Black Maternal Health Week and commit to fighting for health care equity for black women and mothers. Therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Section one, the Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing April 11th through April 17th, 2022 as Black Maternal Health Week. Come on, Councilman Benedict. <laughs> we know you gotta say something. <laughs> and you can add your own little twist to it as well. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Hurt, I'm just gonna say what it says. <laughs> this resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Please let us know if you would like to say something. There I added. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much and thank you to the council for recognizing this week and um, continuing the efforts. This is not a week long uh, initiative, but we know that this work continues beyond the week. So thank you for joining us. You want to talk about the celebration you had last week? Sure. We um, were able to celebrate on Thursday, April, I believe, 13th it was, um, at the Honey Alexander Center. Um, we had an evening of community conversation, a wonderful panel with um, many moms that shared their experiences, um, and just a wonderful time to raise awareness and continue the conversation around black maternal health. But the first of many. The first of many. We had a beautiful week of, of conversation. Conversation. That's the first of many. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Madam Chair, I would like to say that Councilmember Virtue is one of those sponsors and she allowed us to use her time to make this presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that concludes the presentation. We're now on to announcements. Oh, no announcements? Any announcements? Councilmember Styles. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Just wanted to let everyone know that next week, we begin the first of six community meetings to discuss the Global Mall uh, in conjunction with the planning department. That will be Tuesday, this upcoming 26th of April at 6 p.m. at the Southeast Community Center. I invite everyone from any part of town to please come out and participate in our discussions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member, Council Member Toombs. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just wanted to remind District 2 community members that we have our monthly District 2 community-wide meeting next Tuesday, April 26th at 6 p.m. in the community room at the North Precinct, 2231 26th Avenue North. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Porterfield. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I would like to thank all the District 29 uh, constituents that came out to our office hours on last Saturday. And I wanted to announce our litter walk for this upcoming Saturday. Um, it will be in conjunction with District 33, as well as the Mayor's Spring Clean. So that will be this Saturday, April 23rd, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it will be, uh, we're starting off at Compton's, located at 28 
8008 Old Smith Springs Road. And just uh, to clarify, because we've had some questions, this is an actual litter walk. So we are planning our uh, bigger community cleanup that we typically have. Um, we are planning one of those for this summer, but this is a litter walk. So we would like all of the residents of District 29 and District 33 to show up at Compton's this Saturday. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilmember Toombs. Thank you, Chair. I forgot to add this uh, Saturday, April 23rd at 8.30 a.m. is uh, what, the third uh, community cleanup as part of the District 2 Spring Clean, and it's also part of the mayor's uh, countywide cleanup effort. So 8.30, we're meeting at the Exxon at the intersection of Bridge Church Pike and West Trinity Lane. 8.30, we'll probably be out there to about 10.30 or 11. Thank you. Councilmember Evans. Thank you, Councilwoman Soar. I've got two things really quickly. On Wednesday, April 27th at 6 p.m., the Donaldson Hermitage Neighborhood Alliance is going to be hosting an MNPS School Board District 4 Candidate Forum uh, with all three of our school board contenders. It is going to be held um, at starting at 6 p.m., and it is going to be held at the in Kevin Roten's district <laughs> at the Hermitage Police Precinct. I didn't know if Kevin would speak to this, so I'm speaking to it for him because education is very important to me. So um, anyway, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is on Saturday, December the 3rd, or I'm sorry, April the 30th, um, Keep Cook, Re Cook Recreation Area Public or the Friends of Cook Recreation Area is hosting their celebration at Shelter One. If you're interested in attending and meeting other neighborhoods who want to work on beautifying Cook Recreation Area, please email keep cook, re cook recreation area public at gmail.com or you're welcome to email me and I'll put you in contact with the hosts. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Varys. Yes, good evening. Um, I wanted to uh, pause in celebration. It is April the 19th, um, and on April 19th in 1960, Diane Nash uh, confronted uh, Mayor West on these very steps, uh, and uh, yesterday we measured for the plaques that will go up for Diane Nash Plaza, and I am so happy about uh, the timing, so everybody pause and remember uh, what happened uh, on this day in 1960. Also wanted to remind everybody that um, we'll be celebrating the Memorial David McMurray Way uh, tomorrow at noon at the corner of Woodruff and um, Madison Station Boulevard. Um, Woodruff will now be known as David McMurray Way honorably, and we're very excited about that. And uh, I hope that if you're a friend of David's, you will join us. Uh, please uh, plan on parking and walking to the spot. Uh, uh, the construction area will be temporarily suspended for our event, and I uh, hope to see you there tomorrow at noon. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Gamble. Thank you. I would like to announce that there will be a District 3 community uh, meeting on April 26th, next Tuesday, April 26th at 6 p.m. at the Community Baptist Church. That's 3838 Dickerson Pike. And this is our quarterly district-wide meeting uh, for District 3, April 26th at 6 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> Have to. Councilmember Syracuse. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm excited that uh, the artists have been chosen for the new Donaldson Library site, and the community is going to have a chance to engage with the outdoor piece artist, um, and that is going to be on Friday, April 29th. 
uh, at 5.30 at Wind Down Nashville, just steps uh, from where the art piece will be. That's Friday, April 29th at Wind Down Nashville in Donaldson Plaza, uh, 2720 Old Lebanon Pike. Uh, come out to meet the stakeholder, or uh, this is a stakeholder meeting. Come out to meet the artist, uh, engage with them, give them your input about the community and help them envision uh, what the art piece is going to be. Uh, it's gonna be an extraordinary art piece in the green space in front of the new library. Again, it's Friday, April 29th at 5.30 at Wind Down Nashville. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, and congratulations on your wedding. All right. Councilmember Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Just wanted to announce there's going to be a District 21 Town Hall on Tuesday, April 26th at 6 p.m. at St. James Missionary Baptist Church on 28th Avenue North. Again, uh, District 21 Town Hall uh, next Tuesday, April 26th uh, at 6 p.m. at St. James Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you. Looking, I'm looking at the see. All right, that concludes the uh, announcements. Thank you.
On the house side of the Senate. to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. Will all members of the Council, as well as the public, uh, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight is brought to us by Mike Muldoon. Uh, he is the guest of Council Member Jenny Welsh. He's also her husband. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I am honored to be here before all of you in Council in person for prayer simply many families do each day before a meal, let's say, around a table. But now, so many little tables I see, in a way, of districts, or members of a family of sorts. And may each of you behind these little tables of districts gather and listen and follow your hearts and follow your civic duty to those voices you have sworn to represent all of those voices. And these tables that you sit behind right now, 
Well, maybe they are part of a whole of one big table of family where brothers and sisters, like in so many families, may not agree politically or socially, but still have the conversation with civility. May you have the power to lead and yet not be afraid to be led into the power of unity to fight those who act with impunity. And so may we close with a prayer or a hope with all of you, united in this family through the humanity that touches each and every person and simply asks us all to just reach across every table, no matter how big or how small. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. be seated. Uh, without objection, we will suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from April 5th, 2022? I see a motion properly seconded. Uh, without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Mr. Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. All right. Um, so um, a couple of notes. Um, we um, obviously allow individuals, we've uh, done it for the last couple of meetings, individuals who are seeking public office to come and introduce themselves uh, and tell us and the viewing public what they're running for. Um, I believe we do have some uh, folks seeking public office. If they would come to the back, uh, again, just a quick introduction and what they're running for, that would be great. Come on up. Good afternoon, my name is Erica Gilmore and I'm running for Metropolitan Trustee. It's good to see each of you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Trustee. Vice Mayor, and to this body, surely appreciate you. I'm honored, surely, to be here. My name is Howard Jones and I'm a candidate for Circuit Court Clerk and I appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody? Oh. Mr. Hager. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Larry Hager. I'm running for the Seventh Circuit Court here in Davison County. Been practicing law over 30 years, and I've been on the council almost eight years now. Appreciate your support. Thank you. Right. Thank you, council member. And I saw Vivian Wilhoyt running around in the back. Ms. Wilhoyt, would you like to say something? Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> Vice Mayor. I'm Vivian Wilhoy, and I'm your assessor property of Nashville, Davidson County, and I ask you for your vote in 2024. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else back there? I know that um, we are honored to have Senator uh, Brenda Gilmore is back, and uh, we're going to talk about her in just a few minutes anyway, but uh, Senator Gilmore, welcome. Um, so uh, a reminder as we get started tonight, assuming we do pass uh, a resolution on the agenda, uh, the State of Metro Address will be held Wednesday, April the 27th, 2022 at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Southeast Nashville Community Center. Uh, council members should be there no later than 9.30 that morning. Uh, um, we have asked uh, Ms. Roseanne Hayes to make sure that everybody uh, is in the right place. But again, it's going to be Wednesday, April the 27th, 2022 at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Southeast Nashville Community Center. I get all that correct? Look at the administration. Um, there is uh, early voting for a number of races uh, happening right now. Uh, all early voting locations are open as of tomorrow, running through Thursday, April the 28th. So again, all early voting locations will be open as of tomorrow, and early voting will go on until Thursday, April the 28th. Uh, to check where those locations are and what times those polls are open, uh, please call the Election Commission at 615-862-8800. That's 615-862-8800, or go to www.nashville.gov forward slash vote. 
That's www.nashville.gov forward slash vote. Uh, again, remember, uh, we have a number of races going on, um, and please um, uh, take a look at the races, um, uh, look at uh, who's running, and, and please, please vote. Uh, it is also my understanding that our finance director will be providing the Metro Council uh, with an overview of the Metro budget on Friday, April the 29th at 10 a.m. in the council chamber. Uh, that is obviously a um, couple days after the mayor gives his state of Metro address. Again, an overview of the Metro budget here on Friday, April the 29th at 10 a.m. in the council chamber. Uh, please make sure you note that on your calendar. Uh, there's a number of things going on with this year's budget review, and uh, at this point, I'm gonna recognize the budget chair and council member, Berkeley Allen. Council member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just wanted to start getting dates on people's calendar. There will be a, a, a letter going out to all of you with all these dates on there, but um, following the budget presentation, we will get the honest to goodness budget book virtually this year, not the, not the four inch thick notebook. Uh, and then beginning when Wednesday, May 18th, uh, we will have department hearings here in council chambers at four o'clock in the afternoon for uh, five days running. Uh, Thursday, May 19th, Monday, May 23rd, Tuesday, May 24th, and Wednesday, May 25th. We will hear from the key departments and what they've asked for in the budget. So that's Wednesday, May 18th, 19th, and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, May 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And then the, uh, the public hearing where we hear from the public on uh, their thoughts on the budget will be uh, the regular first Tuesday in June. That is the only thing that will be on the public hearing agenda is uh, hearing about the budget. So please make sure to, uh, that you are available for that. And then we will have budget workshops beginning on June 9th, 13th, 14th, and 15th, and that is for council members to discuss items that we would like to make changes to the proposed budget. Um, and we'll be, we'll be given the opportunity to fill out your budget wish list items and then we will work through those uh, during that time. There will be additional dates if needed, but hopefully we'll be efficient and get our job done by then. So all this will be sent out to you um, in a letter, but I just wanted to get that on your radar. And then also just to mention, uh, we have been selected by uh, a group called Radical Exchange who has worked with the government um, Finance Office Officers Association, GFOA, which is the group that comes up with all the best practices for accounting that are used in cities across, um, across the country. They um, are a group that works on a democratic process and they would like to do a pilot with us uh, that we will use for, the, it will provide information for them, it will provide information from us, it will not be binding, but it's another type of voting mechanism that we are gonna try using during our wish list compilations. Uh, so just to kind of get that bug in your ear, I'll also send out a letter about that. So hopefully all those dates are on your calendar. Um, all council members are invited to participate in this process. Uh, we wanna make sure that this budget reflects uh, the, the goals and the wishes of the city and the and the priorities. So I hope you all, all participate. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, uh, council member Allen. Um, as we close uh, the notes, uh, as always, I ask you to please keep Ukraine and its citizens in your thoughts, along with uh, many other countries or people that are suffering um, still a lot of things really bad going on out there um, also ask that you keep in your thoughts the various countries entities and people that are working to uh, deal continually with the surge of refugees that um, are still uh, flooding um, out of ukraine um, there were also um, if you're paying attention to the news a number of mass shootings um, there were almost um, uh, so there were several over the Easter weekend. I know Pittsburgh experienced some, uh, Columbia, South Carolina. There are other cities involved. Um, still a lot of very, very sad things happening out um, in our world. Um, we are now ready to proceed to elections and confirmations. Um, the, uh, the first order of business, before I get to Council Member Pulley, uh, who's gonna be, who chaired uh, rules today, the first item of business is to elect a Metropolitan Auditor. Now, pursuant to Section 8.121 of the Metro Charter, Metropolitan Auditor is to be appointed by a majority vote of the Council from a list of three qualified candidates recommended by the Audit Committee. This occurs 
auditors pursuant to the charter every eight years, and so the term of the Metro Auditor is eight years. Um, as you may remember, however, uh, there was a vacancy several years ago, and the council had to fill the vacancy of the remainder of the term that was outstanding. Um, but we're once again back at uh, selecting the Metropolitan Auditor. Um, we have the names of the three recommended individuals, and they are in the order in which they were ranked by the, the uh, Metropolitan Audit Committee. The Audit Committee met, interviewed, and then they ranked, and they are providing the council with three names, but again, they are in ranked order. Uh, the three names are the, the, uh, the top candidate is Lauren Riley, uh, the person who was recommended second is Philip Reynolds, and the person who is in the third spot is Jennifer Anderson. Uh, we have two members of the council that serve on the audit committee, Council Member Hurt and Council Member Toombs. I'm gonna go to Council Member Hurt first and then Council Member Toombs for um, any response. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to stand and thank those uh, publicly who applied. We had some outstanding candidates, but this is an arduous task for someone to hold. And, um, and for the looks of the Metropolitan Audit Office that's now being run by Ms. Riley, it, it was a, a very... Um, it was a, a, a delight to know that she uh, did outshine the others uh, in order to be recommended as the top candidate for the job. And I'm just so pleased because I, it's almost like she has a photographic memory. She knows every department and all of the, everything about him. I was just so impressed with her. And likewise, the consistency the across the board from all of those candidates and, and what they knew. It was just a very impressive group and I think that we are uh, very blessed to have uh, those interested and those who are now serving. All right, thank you, Council and, Member. And, and I would ask that you take the recommendation offered by the Metropolitan Audit Committee. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I just want to echo the sentiments of Councilwoman Hurt. Uh, Ms. Riley, the, the way that she has run the, uh, the office over these past two years is, is quite impressive. Uh, we did interview some very uh, qualified candidates and she's just leaps and bounds above all of the other candidates. Uh, her, her education and training, her work experience is nothing short of amazing. Um, there's a reason why she's the number one choice of the audit committee, and I would ask that my colleagues follow the recommendation of the audit committee. We are very blessed to have Ms. Riley in the position that she has um, as uh, being the, the audit director, and she should remain in that position. All right, thank you, Councilmember Toombs. So we went back to check the way this worked, and uh, Councilmember Toombs, if you would like, um, it is appropriate to, to uh, make a motion to approve um, the top candidate, and then we'll take a vote and we'll see where that goes. But um, you are, it is appropriate to make a motion to approve uh, Ms. Riley, if that's what you'd like to do. I would absolutely like to move to approve Ms. Riley as the Metropolitan Auditor. All right, so Council Member Toombs uh, makes the motion to approve uh, Lauren Riley as um, our Metropolitan National uh, Auditor. Uh, it has been seconded by Council Member Hurt. Um, discussion on the motion. Uh, Council Member Suara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll keep it very brief. I had the pleasure of serving on the Audit Committee last year and, and working with Ms. Riley, and I just want to echo what everyone said and enthusiastically recommend their approval. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, other discussion? All right, seeing none, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion, uh, the motion to um, uh, second that a motion, uh, the motion to approve Lauren Riley as uh, the Metropolitan Auditor for a term of eight years, uh, properly seconded. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion is approved. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the council, uh, Lauren Riley is in the back. Uh, Ms. Riley, if you'd stand, we can properly thank you. I would like to thank the other uh, candidates um, who did apply. Mr. Reynolds, are you here? Or uh, Ms. Anderson, are you here? All right, 
Um, it was a, a good interview process, uh, good discussion, lots of um, um, good questions. Um, but um, I think we're very fortunate to have Ms. Riley. Um, she's done a remarkable job over the last several years, and now she's got a term in front of her of eight years. Ms. Riley, uh, Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. All right, uh, we will now proceed. Uh, Council Member Pulley has a report from the Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Rules Conferences and Election Commission, uh, Committee uh, considered a number of appointments uh, for the Board of Equalization, Ms. Deb Dawson, uh, Ms. Jacqueline Kelly, and Mr. Bob Notestein, and Mr. Derek Starks from the Greenways and Open Space Commission, Ms. Brenda Gilmore, and Ms. Jeannie Nelson, and from the Fair Board, Mr. Todd Hartley, uh, and we recommended approval of all candidates, uh, six in favor and zero against, and I would move uh, that uh, we recommend approval of all those uh, candidates. Thank all right. you. All right, Councilmember Pulley, if you don't mind, go back over. Let me make sure I've got the names. Was anybody not on the list? Uh, Ms. Glenda Chambers. Okay, Ms. Glenda Chambers, Chambers was that. not on the list. Thank you. So we're looking at Board of Equalization, the reappointment of Ms. Deb Dawson, uh, Board of Equalization, the reappointment of Ms. Jacqueline Kelly, Board of Equalization, the reappointment of Mr. Bob Notestein, um, Board of Equalization, the reappointment of Mr. Derek Starks, Greenways and Open Space Commission, Ms. Brenda Gilmore, uh, Ms. Jeannie Nelson, and the Fair Board, the appointment of Todd Hartley. Have I got those right? That's correct. Okay, so um, uh, so I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Now, I believe that we had some late filed questionnaires that came in, um, one on uh, the reappointment of Ms. Jacqueline Kelly, and the other one on the reappointment of Mr. Derek Starks. Uh, Mr. Clark, is that right? Do I have this right? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. All right, so um, here's what we have to do. Council Member Pulley, if you don't mind, if everybody was ready to proceed tonight, I need a, a motion to suspend the rules to get those two properly before us because their questionnaires weren't turned in properly on time. I uh, move to suspend the rules. Okay, so uh, Council Member Pulley has moved to suspend the, the rules on those two, Ms. Jacqueline Kelly and on Mr. Derek Starks. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules to get those two nominees in front of us tonight? Any objections? Okay, rules are suspended, so they are now properly before us. Uh, the motion is to approve everyone that came before the Rules Committee tonight, with the exception of the appointment of Ms. Glenda Chambers, um, and she will be rolled one week. Okay, um, Councilmember Johnston, uh, you're recognized. That was just an oversight on Councilman Pulley's part. Ms. Glenda Chambers was there with us, and we did vote with six in favor, zero against, to approve her reappointment. Or actually, it's a new appointment. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Pulley, do you have any excuse for what you just did? <laughs> no, I did. Uh, I think I did say that at the very end, well, right before you went into your diatribe. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, Councilmember Pulley's, uh, Councilmember Pulley's microphone has been disconnected. So he'll be talking for the rest of the meeting. All right. So we do have the appointment of Ms. Glenda Chambers. She is actually also before us tonight. So we'll include that in the motion. There's Ms. Chambers. Okay. So uh, the motion is to approve everyone uh, tonight uh, properly. Seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. So uh, let me recognize these individuals. Miss Glenda Chambers, because she is in the in the chamber. Uh, if you would please stand up and remain standing. Uh, Miss Deb Dawson. There's Miss Dawson. Miss Jacqueline Kelly. Uh, Mr. Bob Notestein. Uh, Mr. Derek Starks. Uh, Senator Brenda Gilmore, uh, Miss Jeannie Nelson. Jeannie's still here. Okay, and um, Mr. Todd Hartley. There's Mr. Hartley. Thank you all uh, for uh, being a part of this process, agreeing to serve. We very much appreciate your help, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in thanking them.
for um, our public comment period. Um, we do this at the second meeting of the month. Um, we have, I believe, uh, we have five people that have signed up to speak tonight for the public comment period. Uh, this is for uh, members of the public that have signed up in advance to speak to the council. Each individual will have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, we are ready to proceed. The first individual up is uh, Vicki Batcher from District 21, Council Member Brandon Taylor's district. Uh, Ms. Batcher, welcome. You're going to be speaking on affordable housing. Thank you, Vice Mayor Shulman and Council Members. I've heard a lot about people needing money for affordable housing, and yes, it, it's desperately needed. But tonight, I'd like to talk to you about what affordable housing has done for me. Affordable housing has given me the security of knowing that I can pay my rent every month on time, in full. That's what it's done for me. Today, I don't need to decide if I want to pay, if I can pay the rent, feed my kids, or pay the electricity bill. After being homeless in Nashville for seven years, I know that I'll always have a home, safety, and security. Today, I'm a citizen of Nashville. I vote. I'm a productive member of my community. I've served on the Homeless Planning Council, the CAB, the Cold Weather Shelter Task Force, and the Strategic Planning Committee. I help create new policies about homelessness today, COVID, and the Cold Weather Shelter with my lived experience. Having a home allows me to contribute instead of become a burden by figuring out how to survive each day. Having a home allows me to contribute instead of a burden. I am housed today. I make better decisions today. I have a budget and I'm improving my credit. I ask you to think about me whenever you decide to put money into affordable housing. We need much more. We need it today. And with the world, the world is watching us with the recent legislation that has passed. Our response needs to be affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patcher. Thank you. Next is uh, Pastor Enoch Fuzz. Uh, he is also a member of District 21, Council Member Brandon Taylor's uh, district, and he's gonna speak on homelessness issues. Good evening, Vice Mayor, and to all of our council. I, um, I'm very serious hearted this suggestion that I wanna bring. We talk to a lot of people. If we don't provide or create affordable housing, it will create itself. I hear that the numbers of people who are homeless in Nashville, 6,000, 7,000, 3,000 school children. I read the Bible every night. I read a chapter. One of the ones that stand out most to me is Isaiah the 58th chapter, where it says, cry aloud and spare not, and tell my people about their wrongdoing. But it talks about how we pray, how we go to church, and it says that we act as we are people who know God and do what God would have us to do. I was, and all of us have been following the, um, homeless issue out in Bellmead, uh, Bellevue, and I was driving by and wanted to make this proposal, an idea that we're talking about taking the old Hillwood High School and Brookmead Elementary School that sits in the middle of a very affluent neighborhood and make them homeless shelters and homeless service centers for people in Nashville, as we talk about $3 billion for football, we can't talk about health care and housing. So that's my idea tonight, that we consider the old Hillwood High School and Brookmead Elementary in that affluent neighborhood, and let's have a place for our homeless to go. Thank you, Pastor Fuzz. <laughs> Our next speaker, uh, actually, we have two together, James Powers and Martha Carroll. Uh, 
uh, and they are here to uh, invite us to a special NOAA uh, housing presentation. Uh, they are members of uh, Council Member Freddie O'Connell's district. John Parker. Vice Mayor Shulman and members of the Metro Council, I'm Jim Powers. I'm Martha Carroll. And we are members of NOAA, Nashville Organizing for Action and Hope. As members of the Affordable Housing Task Force, we urge Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County government to invest in expanding the supply and types of affordable workforce housing, senior housing, and housing for the homeless to help Nashville residents obtain safe housing and remain in their homes throughout the city. NOAA is extending an invitation to council members to join us for a conversation about budget opportunities and proposals to improve affordable housing. Please join us on a Zoom conference call at noon on Tuesday, April 26th for a presentation on senior housing, workforce housing, immigrant housing, and displaced Nashville residents with possible solutions to Nashville's housing crisis. Look for this Zoom link and a copy of the agenda which has been sent to all Metro Council members from NOAA this past Sunday. Thank you for your attention and we hope to see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Ms. Carroll. <laughs> Um, next speaker tonight uh, under the public comment period is uh, Jason Freeman. Uh, he is a member of um, Council Member Emily Benedict's, uh, Benedict's uh, district, District 7, and he's going to speak on MNPS pay study in the pay plan. Thank you. Um, good evening. I'm Jason Freeman. I'm representing SEIU Local 205 and support staff in Metro National Public Schools. Last week, the Metro School Board passed what I would call a menu, not really a, a specific a budget request, but a menu. Uh, some things I want you to know about this menu. The continuity of operations budget, which is just keeping the lights on, essentially the status quo, costs $48 million of new money. Um, the next thing I want you to know is that everyone from Dr. Battle to the board, teachers, even students spoke last week uh, that pay for support staff is the number one menu item, the number one priority. The thing I need you to know about that is there's no price tag on this menu item because like last year, there is a pay study going on as there was for teachers. The difference is we don't know what the goals are of this study, but I want you to know what support staff think the goals should be. The goals should be living wages, like something Metro government already has a policy for for all the rest of Metro government. They use the MIT living wage calculator, which has recently been updated. And it says that it takes a single person with no kids, $33,802 a year to survive in Nashville. That comes out to 16 and 25 an hour for a full-time job. But at MNPS, we can't rely on the hourly wage number to achieve this goal. And that's because people like paraprofessionals work seven and a half, get paid for seven and a half hours a day for 201 days out of the year. And that means that they start at $24,500. All 853 paraprofessionals in Metro Nashville Public Schools are earning less than living wages in this city. Um, in total, there's more than 2,000 employees in Metro Nashville Public Schools earning less than a living wage. We estimate it will cost about $30 million to fix this problem. Last year, we found $50 million to make teachers the highest paid in the state. Surely, we can, we can find 30 to ensure every employee can simply pay all their bills in the same month. I want you to imagine being an MMPS employee making $21,000, $22,000 a year, which means you're taking home about $375 a week. You're seeing stories about a $2 billion stadium, $175 million boulevard, $50 million for teachers, and so on. And now I want you to imagine hearing there isn't enough money to pay you a living wage. Let's not have that happen. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. <clears throat> And uh, our last speaker tonight is uh, David Rutledge uh, from Council Member Sean Parker's district. Uh, he's going to speak on the importance of community benefits agreements. Mr. Rutledge. Good evening, y'all. I'm David Rutledge representing Lyona Local 386. Thank you for providing the opportunity to speak. I'm here to briefly update y'all on the progress of the negotiations for a community benefits agreement between Stand Up Nashville and CREA around the development of the River Chase Apartments, an affordable housing complex that I happen to live right next door to. In response to the advocacy and engagement with residents by Sun, NOAA, the Equity Alliance, and Lyona over the last three years, CREA has made a lot of verbal commitments around support for displaced residents of River Chase, as well as commitments to the long-term affordability for a portion of 
the units in the redeveloped site and the right for displaced residents to return upon completion. Our coalition is continuing to work with them to ensure that those commitments are housed in a legal document that will be enforceable in the long term. Recently, however, there have been comments made in negotiations that our advocacy around the construction jobs to be created in the redevelopment process are getting in the way of the question of affordability. One sticking point seems to be that our insistence that they not hire any contractors who've had workers die on their projects in the last five years. Over 20 workers, including one 16-year-old boy, have died in the last five years on construction jobs in Nashville. We are passionate and committed to this issue because nobody should lose their life in the name of our city's economic progress. And if that disqualifies anybody's preferred business partners, we are not sorry. The purpose of all community benefits agreements is not just charity, but empowerment for affected communities and the mitigation of harm for residents whose lives are being turned upside down so that out-of-state investors can profit off the growth of our city. Guaranteeing safe, good-paying, family-sustaining jobs through high-road union contractors is a means to providing a pathway out of poverty for low-income members of our community while also giving those workers a voice on the job. Furthermore, ending the practice of hiring bottom-feeding contractors to change our city's landscape will result in cleaner and safer neighborhoods free from the risk of lead, asbestos, and other endangerments to our health and well-being. CREA has positioned itself to set a new standard for the way our city grows, and we are excited to work with them to make that a reality. But in order to do so, it will be necessary to face the reality that changing the way contractors do business in this city has to start somewhere, and there's no better place to do that than River Chase. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, I, I believe that takes care of everybody on the public comment period. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, we are now ready for resolutions on public hearing. We have two on the calendar tonight. Um, I'll call up the resolutions one at a time, then refer to the sponsor, unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing. Sponsor will call for a public hearing, then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution, and ask for a show of hands for those who are in opposition to the resolution. Anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, I'll ask you to come forward, uh, find the microphone, introduce yourself, and give us your address, and you'll have two minutes in which to speak. I'll then ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak, we'll do the same thing. After that process, I will close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. Uh, so we are now ready. Uh, we have two tonight. Uh, the first one is RS 2022-1473 by Council Member Withers. It's a resolution exempting Bay 6, located at 1101 McKinney Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Um, Council Member Withers, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? Yes, you can. Government Operations, Councilmember Hancock. <laughs> On RS 2021 1473, Government Operations voted to approve. Eight in favor and zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Withers, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Please. All right, I declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this measure. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this measure. Seeing nobody in opposition, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, Vice Come Mayor. Come on up. Uh, name, Harrington. address, and two minutes. Curtis Harrington, uh, Belcher Sykes Harrington, Council for Bay 6, and uh, here and happy to answer any questions members may have. I think we're good. Anybody else in, uh, anybody else in favor wishes to speak? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Weathers, you're on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. All right, Council Member uh, Withers has moved approval of RS 2022-1473, properly seconded. Back to you, Council Member Withers. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice uh, Mayor. Um, this uh, is actually located at uh, what used to be a car wash. Uh, it's at the corner of McKinney and Gallatin. Uh, in my, my neighborhood of Eastwood. Uh, it used to be a car wash. It was acquired by a local real estate uh, professional who is working on a lot of um, sort of creative spaces for uh, business users, as well as in this case, restaurant users. Uh, they have done a transformation of a former car wash into uh, a grouping of restaurant spaces that are ready to lease for small business owners. Uh, and I'm very happy to report that uh, I believe most, if not all of these small restaurant businesses are owned and operated by women or and or people of color. So that's very exciting uh, and look forward to uh, uh, having neighbors be able to enjoy the 
unique and diverse offerings that will be uh, offered by these uh, diverse small business owners there at um, McKinney and Gallatin. And with that, I'd like to renew my motion to approve. All right, uh, Council Member Withers has uh, moved passage of RS 2022-1473, was properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? All right, seeing none, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion on RS 2022-1473 for passage say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. A resolution passes. Thank you, Councilmember Withers. Uh, the second item is from Councilmember Parker, RS 2022-1474, a resolution exempting Spicy Boys, located at 924 McFerrin Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Um, Councilmember Hancock, what did you all think about Spicy Boys? Again, we were all in agreement, eight in favor, zero against, that you have to have beverages if you have spice. Okay, very good. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Uh, they do have beverages, and we're um, looking at maybe expanding the uh, options of beverages they have there. So with that, I'd like to uh, open the public hearing. All right, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of the resolution. See some hands back there. All right, there they are. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. All right, seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak? No? All right, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Parker, you're on your resolution. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, with that, I'll just uh, move for approval. All right, Councilman Parker has moved for approval on RS 2022-1474, properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to rise in support of the spicy boy from District 5. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that comment. Any other comments? All right, seeing none, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution, RS 2022-1474 for passage, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Congratulations to the spicy boys. All right. <laughs> We are now on, uh, we are now ready for the uh, uh, consent resolutions and resolutions. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go through the um, resolutions that are marked on the consent agenda, uh, read the resolution numbers that are on the consent agenda. If you think of anything that needs to pop off, uh, please let me know, all right? Um, the first one up uh, on the consent agenda is item number seven, 1476. Item number eight, 1477 is on consent. 1478 is on consent. 1479 is on consent. 1480 is on consent. 1481 is on consent. 1482 on consent. 1483 on consent. 1484 on consent. 1485 on consent. 1486 on consent. 1487 on consent, 1488 on consent, 1489 on consent, 1490 on consent, 1491 on consent, 1492 on consent, 1493 on consent, 1494 on consent, 1495 on consent, 1496 on consent, 1497 on consent, 1498 on consent, 1500 is on consent, 1501 is on consent, and 1502 is on consent. And uh, go back to the beginning, we we're pulling uh, item 1478, which would have been, uh, which is item number nine on the consent calendar that is coming off, okay? Okay. Anything else that needs to be bumped off the consent calendar? Council Mayor Stiles, you're, uh, hold on. There you go. Thank you, 1496, please. Okay, okay 1496, um, that's item number 27 is coming off. Okay, Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, item number 29. Okay, item number 29 is coming off. That's RS 2022-1498. That's coming off consent as well. Anybody else? All right, here we go. <clears throat> 
Okay, the first item up is RS 2022-1476 by Council Member Vercher and Pulley, a resolution setting the date and time for the 2022 State of the Metropolitan Government Address. RS 2022-1477 by Taylor, Syracuse, and Allen, a resolution appropriating an amount not to exceed $50,000 from the undesignated fund balance of the general fund for a grant to Music City, Inc., a nonprofit organization for the express purpose of restoring and rehabilitating the Elks Lodge. Item number 10, RS 2022-1479 by Council Member Allen, Resolution appropriating the amount of $20,099,000 from the General Fund Reserve Fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Uh, RS 2022-1480 by Council Member Allen. Resolution appropriating to certain accounts for the benefit of the Administrative Department, Fire Departments, Public Works, NDOT, Social Services, Solid Waste, uh, Mediation Services Fund in the amount of $14,007,600. Uh, RS 2022-1481 one uh, by Council Member Allen, a resolution appropriating to certain accounts for the benefit of the administrative departments and Office of Fleet Management in the amount of $28 million. Item number 13, RS 2022-1482, Council Member Allen and Hancock. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and governmentjobs.com, Inc., doing business as NeoGov to provide an inter uh, internet recruitment and applicant tracking system. RS 2022-1483 by Council Members Allen, Welsh, and Suara. Resolution to appropriate grant funds to the Martha O'Brien Center Tennessee Opportunity Pilot Planning Grant to the Metropolitan Government through the Action Commission to formalize the party's relationship while collaborating on services, strategies, and supports for families with children that meet Tennessee's low-income guidelines. RS 2022-1484 by Council Members Allen, Bradford, and Welsh, a resolution approving an art donation acceptance agreement between Kevin Crumbo and the Metropolitan Government through the Metro Nashville Arts Commission. Item 16, RS 2022-1485 by Allen, Bradford, and others. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to an in-kind grant from Americans for the Arts to the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan National Arts Commission to implement a diversity in arts leadership internship program to provide technical assistance to help establish a summer internship program. RS 2022-1486 by Alan Evans and Welsh. Resolution accepting a grant from the National Environmental Health Association to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health for the Food Protection Services Division of the Metro Health Department to, to complete a self-assessment of nine retail food program standards. RS 2022-1487 by Alan Evans and Welsh, a resolution accepting a grant for the National Environmental Health Association to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health to provide funding for the Food Protection Services Division to attend an NEHA-sponsored self-assessment and verification audit workshop. RS 2022-1488 by Allen Evans and Welsh. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government uh, through the Board of Health and the State of Tennessee Department of Health to provide medical examiners investigations, post-mortem examinations, and consultations. RS 2022-1489, that's item number 20, Allen Evans, Welsh, and Tawara. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a presumptive eligibility services grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health to provide prenatal presumptive eligibility program enrollment assistance to pregnant women with 10 care and cover kids applications. RS 2022-1490, Allen, Evans, Bradford, and Suara, resolution accepting a grant from Friends of Metro Animal Care and control to the Metropolitan Government through the Board of Health to provide funding for various programs for shelter animals. RS 2022-1491, Allen and Evans, a resolution approving Amendment 1 to a grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metropolitan Government through the Office of Emergency Management to provide resources to procure items, training, and and or equipment for hazardous materials, hazmat pre uh, preparedness. RS 2022-1492, Allen and Evans, the resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County through the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department and Williamson County Centennial High School for extra duty police services. RS 2022-1493, Allen and Evans, resolution approving an application for a community-based traffic safety enforcement and education grant from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department to continue the enhanced DUI and Enforcement Initiative and Targeting of Distracted Driving and Seatbelt Enforcement. RS 2022-1494, Johnson, Sepulveda, Gamble, and others. Resolution pro appropriating $260,000 in American Rescue Plan Act funds from fund number 30216 to carry out the study proposed by RS 2021-927 to identify strategies to assist independent music venues in recovering from the impacts of COVID-19 and other acute stresses. RS 2022-1495, Parker, Allen, and Young. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to an agreement between the Metropolitan Government Government, acting by and through the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewerage Services and PRISM Properties to extend the term of the agreement for a period of one year. RS 
2022-1497, that's item 28, by Syracuse, a resolution supporting efforts to revive the music city music council into a sustainable and effective initiative. Um, RS 2022-1500, that's item number 31, resolution recognizing May 6, 2022, as Provider Appreciation Day in Nashville and Davidson County. That's by Sledge, Hurt, Suarez, and others. RS 2022-1501 by Parker, Stiles, and Sepulveda. Resolution expressing appreciation for the employees of the Nashville Electric Service, recognizing April 17th, 2022 as Lineman Appreciation Day. And the last one on consent, RS 2022-1502, Hancock, Allen, Henderson, and others. A resolution to commemorate the 52nd anniversary of Earth Day and to recognize April 23rd, 2022 as Earth Day in Nashville and Davidson County. I believe that got them all. Anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar. All right. All right, seeing none, I need some committee reports. I'm going to go first to Council Member Allen. You've got budget and finance. Council Member Sawara, you've got budget and finance. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance recommends approval for IRS 2022, 1477, 79, 1480, 81, 82, 88, 11 in favor, zero against. And we recommend approval for 1483, 84, 85, 86, 87, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Uh Council Member Hancock, I think you've got one on here. I do. It's RS 2022-1482 by Allen and Hancock. And as usual, we were unanimous. Eight in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Councilmember Welsh, Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Human Services considered RS 2022-1483, and we voted to approve four in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, Council Member Weathers, uh, you've got one in Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee considered RS 2022-1494 and recommended approval nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right. Uh, Council Member Bradford, uh, Public Facilities. Is this thing on? Uh, public Facilities, Arts and Culture had RS 2022-1484, 1485, and 1494. Six in favor, none against for approval. All right. Uh, public Health and Safety, Council Member Evans. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We have uh, considered 1486, 1487, 1488, 1489, 1490, 1491, 1492, and 1493. Recommended for approval for all of those. Six in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pulley, uh, Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Rules Committee considered RS uh, 2022, 1476, 1497, 1500, 1501, and 1502, and recommended approval of all those resolutions, six in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, transportation, Council Member Young. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against, of ours, 2022-1495, and I'll move approval of the consent agenda. All right, so Council Member Young has moved approval of the uh, resolution consent agenda. Properly seconded, any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, we're ready to vote for all resolutions on the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right, so now we go back to um, resolutions that were not on the consent agenda. First one up is item number three, RS 2022 1444 by Parker Allen Toombs and others. A resolution authorizing a grant not to exceed $1 million from the Barnes Fund for affordable housing to pathway lending for the express purpose of providing weatherization assistance and energy efficiency improvements to housing units owned by qualified low income individuals and families. Uh, Councilmember Parker, you're recognized on the resolution. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I think we have. Need a, at least one committee report. That's right. Uh, budget and finance, um, Council Member, oh, Council Member Sawara, hold on. Our budget and finance voted 10 in favor, one against, no abstention. Okay, thank you. Um, Council Member Parker, I believe that was it. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move for approval. Okay, so Council Member Parker has moved for approval of RS 2022 1444, properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. Yes, I have a question. Uh, since we're providing this grant to Pathway, will Pathway be providing the funds to the individuals as a loan or 
will these services be paid for through the money that we're putting forth? Who wants to answer that? Administration? Thank you, Council Member. The um, grant is to Pathway. The pa Pathway is the fiscal agent, fiscal sponsor for TVA, who provides the the actual um, repairs at no cost to the homeowner. Council Member House, or anything else? Oh, that was it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? We're on RS 2022-1444 by Council Member Parker. Seeing nobody else in the queue, uh, we'll try it by voice vote. All those in favor of RS 2022-1444 for passage, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. Thank you, Councilmember Parker. Okay, we're now on RS 2022-1451, item number four. It's a resolution approving two option agreements authorizing the purchase of properties comprising part of the Global Mall site. Styles, Porterfield, Allen, and others. Councilmember Styles, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. For over a decade, the Global Mall has been in dire need of positive attention. The Southeast has been in need of investment, and tonight we have that opportunity to make that happen. Over the last few weeks, you've been given information about the purchase of the mall by the administration, as well as a transformative partnership with Vanderbilt University Medical Center. When I say transformative, I am referring to what having Vanderbilt in our community means. It means having additional access to healthcare, jobs, Additional options for food, and many of you may not know this, but we have been a food desert for many, many years. This would be able to cut many commute times for individuals that potentially work on the site and would give us the opportunity to become a live, work, and play environment. But beyond that, the funding for this purchase will provide our area with the Antioch Performing Arts Center an opportunity to bring exposure to the arts to our youth, many of which do not have opportunities to come downtown like many of us do, to TPAC, Nashville Ballet. They will have music, dance, theater, and mixed medium arts such as sculpture. Your approval tonight, colleagues, is a vote to move the Southeast forward and to make an overdue investment in our community. Frankly, it's an investment in our city as a whole. So I thank you in advance for your yes, and I hope that you will vote for what is good for not only the Southeast, but really is good for the entirety of our city. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. We need some committee reports. Uh, budget and Finance, Council Member Sawara. Budget and Finance voted seven in favor, one against. All right, thank you. And Council Member Withers, Planning and Zoning. I apologize, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee uh, considered RS 2022-1451 and recommended approval, six in favor, three against, one abstention. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, um, Council Member Stiles, it goes back to you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval, please. Okay, so Council Member Stiles says move for approval, properly seconded. Uh, we have discussion on the bill. Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I don't usually abstain from votes. I don't, I don't do that for hard votes, but I'm gonna be doing that tonight. And I have several reasons why, and I wanted to put it on the record. Um, I recognize that this type of funding, this amount of funding is needed in Southeast Nashville. And I recognize that I might be the only Southeast council member that won't be voting in favor of this tonight. Um, and I and I do appreciate Vanderbilt, and I, I I was talking to them outside, and they were open to the idea of having free clinics in Southeast. And I do appreciate Council Member Stiles, who I know has been working on this for over a year. Um, but I have more questions than answers. Um, I I don't appreciate the timelines we're always given. Um, I I don't think it's acceptable. And um, what really pushed me over the edge was 
finding out some information about one of the owners uh, and one of his businesses where he was, um, there was a class action lawsuit against him for stolen wages, retaliation and threats, supervisors punching housekeepers, denial, denial of medical care for injured, injuries sustained on the job, being first forced to work off the clock, earning as little as three six three dollars and sixty three cents an hour, and working seventy hours a week without lunch or rest breaks. Being someone who is a daughter of of someone who worked for some time cleaning hotel rooms, that is not something I would be comfortable voting in favor of tonight. My conscience would not allow me to do that. And, and that is why I will be abstaining. I do not wanna vote no, because I don't wanna give the message that Southeast does not deserve funding, but I can't vote yes tonight. All right, uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, two questions for the administration and they can answer, uh, I guess, back to back. So I'll go ahead and say both now uh, to keep things efficient. I, I think they may have thought I was kidding last night when I asked if we were intending to buy Rivergate next. Um, I know that there are multiple um, underdeveloped or uh, incomplete and mostly vacant shopping centers around the county, including strip malls and malls. And I want to understand our uh, entry into the commercial real estate market. So I'd, I'd love a, a sense of what the strategy is there if we are going to expect proposals to buy Rivergate. In addition to that, I think hearing Councilmember Stiles speak to um, the other investments there, I, I have not seen anything amounting to a cost estimate for uh, other scenarios like a transit center, like the Performing Arts Center, like the build out of the Bridgestone building, uh, like the infrastructure, do we have a cost estimate for future things that are actually going to make this entire project succeed? Because uh, my sense is that the $46 million we're being asked to consider right now is, is only the starting point. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Jameson. Thank you, uh, Chair, and thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Um, the Hickory Hollow Mall, as I grew up knowing it, uh, now Global Mall has been, uh, as Council Lady Stiles has noted, um, somewhat of a, a challenging location for two decades, and I know it has challenged this council. I do recall Council Lady Stiles' predecessors um, trying to work uh, in some way to activate the mall. Um, I don't know if Councilman uh, Young has been working towards uh, acquisition of Rivergate. Uh, we absolutely would uh, welcome any discussions he has uh, to propose. The uh, possibility of a third party investor um, a la Vanderbilt uh, certainly would make uh, that uh, an even more uh, leveraged opportunity for Metro. Um, beyond that, uh, I'm unaware of any uh, discussions he may have had ongoing uh, in that uh, direction, but would welcome that partnership. With respect to uh, the cost estimates for the transit hub, uh, we are uh, in the midst of applying for federal appropriations and providing estimates that will be part and parcel of the planning uh, use study for the site that will include um, cost estimates. We do know that we will be incurring uh, future costs there, uh, regardless uh, of the outcome uh, on this matter. Uh, uh, we have several uses out there currently with respect to the Southeast Community Center, uh, the library, the Ford Ice Center. We have parking obligations and operating agreement obligations that will expire and the replacement costs for just the parking uh, will, I think Metro Legal has estimated at approximately $5 million. So in addition to the cost estimates, the costs defrayed are also being estimated by the planning study. I hope that answers your question. Councilor Ronald O'Connell. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, it, it's, I guess I'd, yeah, it, I'd say it's an incomplete answer to the question of what the, the total cost would be there. I know there is planning work to be done, but this seems like a, a significant down payment on uh, that. So I just, I hope everybody is aware that this is not, this $46 million does not create the vision uh, it, it potentially opens the door to it, but it also does put us on usually in the, the commercial real estate space. And so then the, the follow-up question would be, is as a 
effectively a, a commercial property owner in Southeast Nashville, will every lease agreement then uh, come to this body and how many separate lease agreements do we anticipate over uh, both of these properties? Mr. Chambers. I, I don't know the exact number of separate lease agreements that would come forward because that would depend upon the, the types of uses that materialize on the site, especially with respect to the portion of the property that Metro intends to retain for its own uses. It is certainly entirely possible that a portion of that could go to a commercial uh, uh, entity, uh, not a nonprofit entity uh, that would have a, a separate lease agreement. But by and large, those agreements would come back before the council uh, for approval. Council member. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Uh, Council member Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I've been thinking about how I was going to approach this situation. Now, I appreciate all the hard work Council member Stiles has put in in advocating for her community. So my comments tonight are in no way disparaging on her. I just cannot accept or give my yes vote to this project, to this deal. There's too many open-ended questions. There's not enough verified information. It's all based on a non-binding letter of intent that could in, we could end up buying a $44 million dead mall and be left with a useless piece of property. There's been talk about this is a major investment in Southeast Nashville. What I've heard in the nearly three years I've been on this council from people in Southeast Nashville is they want more sidewalks. They wanna make sure their trash is picked up on time. They wanna make sure that we have recycling services. They wanna make sure that they have proper storm water so that when it rains, their streets don't flood. That's the type of investment that we need to be putting in Southeast Nashville. That's the type of investment that the people have been saying that they want. They don't want Metro to spend their tax dollars on a mall. They want investment in their neighborhoods, provide safe, clean neighborhoods for them to live in. There's also a concern that everybody, when you got your packets the other day, I asked how much property tax does the city receive from this parcel? And there it says we currently receive about $158,000 a year in property taxes. By approving this deal, we lose that. So even though there's been talk that this, that the lease payments will cover the debt service, do those lease payments cover the hundred, nearly $160,000 a year that we are going to be losing? Who's going to be coming up with that? Are we going to expect our taxpayers to help cover that difference? So I'm going to ask my colleagues to join me in saying no on this deal. It's We are not ready to approve anything. This deal is not ready to see the light of day. We need to either defer it or we need to kill it now and let them come back with a better deal that's fair for the city and for the taxpayers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Welsh. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, just tonight in this public comment hearing, we heard about our many, many needs in the city in affordable housing, um, in paying the support staff at uh, Metro Public Schools a living wage, how many workers are not being paid a living wage. We just heard that in order to maintain the status quo, in Metro Public Schools, we need an additional $40 million in new money. Um, with this deal as it is being currently presented, there are still too many unanswered questions and there are still too many blanks that need to be negotiated. And given that, I am very unclear as to why we are backing into someone else's previously negotiated deal that is forcing an arbitrary timetable with the anvil of additional monies out of our pocket being held over our head. Um, we as a council are supposed to be stewards of this city's tax dollars, and I believe that we need to use those tax dollars to fund what we value. And I know what I value is people, human lives, and quality of life, and not acquiring property that there's no need for us to acquire. There are other paths to achieve what this deal does, and I think the prudent pathway is to take another one. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Welsh. Uh, Councilmember Young. Previous question. All right, so Councilmember Young has called the previous question. Uh, so we're gonna vote on the previous question. We'll try this by voice vote. We're not voting on the resolution, just on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, 
Mr. Clark, let's take a vote. Uh, so uh, we're, um, we are voting on the previous question, since I can't tell for sure. Um, previous question takes uh, two thirds of those voting. <coughs> Is that right? Okay. Okay, so we're double checking two thirds of the total votes cast. Mr. Clark. You ready? All right, Mr. Clark, we're voting on the previous question, not on the resolution, just on the previous question. Open up the machines. Are in. Mr. Clark, uh, close the machines, take the vote. checking our math, um, but uh, um, the previous question fails, okay, by, yeah. Uh, so we're back on, um, back on the board. Uh, Councilor Mendes, you're next. I love how Granicus says it passed. <laughs> um, well, I, I kind of, uh, I put myself after Council Member Young, um, just uh, in case the motion failed. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to vote uh, no on this. Um, it is, uh, it's just not fully baked. Um, the, there, I said this yesterday in budget and finance, uh, Councilman Cooper, when he was here, there's not a snowball's chance in hell that he would have voted for this um, because it is loaded with unknown cost and unknown everything. Um, the cost that we know about um, will be uh, $44 million to buy the property. Um, and then I think parking um, cost uh, is projected to be another $5 million to fix that. Um, then the uh, appraisal documents indicate another $12 million to be able to, quote, stabilize the Bridgestone building. Um, the document we got about property assessment said six to $13 million to do a build out for tenants. Um, the uh, Vanderbilt lease, according to what we got yesterday at noon, indicates that their lease will just cover the debt service on the space they use. So Metro will have to pay the debt service on the other building. So half the half the debt service Metro has got to pay for. Um, there's uh, um, up to $7.6 million per year in operating costs, according to the materials we got in noon yesterday for the Metro retained um, building, um, not, not the Vanderbilt building. And you start adding that all up and I mean, I, I, I'm all in favor of investment, but currently there is no tenant. Um, there is no tenant for any of it. Um, and Vanderbilt has expressly 
reserve for itself the right to walk away. Um, their due diligence inspection doesn't even begin until after there's council approval and the property has been obtained. And, and then they're gonna give themselves to the fault for a negotiation that we don't know what's gonna happen with it. And it's, um, this fundamentally comes down to, I've seen in my law practice um, where sometimes real estate developers will fall in love with a piece of property and say, yeah, I know we don't have any answers, but like, let's just get it. It's a great piece of property and we'll figure it out later. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. And that's, um, that's fundamentally what's before us now. And that's, um, that's not good enough for me to have a, a yes vote on this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Mendez. Councilmember Hart. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I join my colleagues that uh, has pause and cause of um, slowing this down. I, I've been trying to decide on what it is I'm going to say. Um, but one thing I guess that hasn't been said is that I found myself in a situation here on this council where we are trying to fix a mess that had been done years before us by other councils. And we make decisions today with great intentions and 10, 20 years later, we find that those unintended consequences and how it's up to uh, another council to fix the problems that we created. And, and I think this is one of those cases. I believe that um, we do have to listen to our constituents. And that's something that they said, as uh, Councilman Welch mentioned in our public hearing. And it's incumbent upon us to listen to them and make sure that we provide them with things that they need most because we are here for them. Um, I think that it is, um, my question yesterday talked about how is this going to negatively impact those smaller healthcare facilities, you know, like Nashville General or Matthew Walker or Salon healthcare facilities, neighborhood health, where it may be okay now, what's going to be 10 years from now? And that question was never answered because I don't think they really know. And I don't want us to get to that point. I mean, it just kind of reminds me of Monopoly. You know, if you bought the railroads and the utilities, public works, you owned it, everything. They took over all, regardless of whether you own Boardwalk or Park Place, even with a hotel. If you own that, if you were the mega, you took everybody else out. And I don't think that that's what we want to do. We don't want to push people out and just keep putting more more of those who already have in. And I just cannot in good conscience vote for this. And I do want to recognize the hard work that Councilmember Styles has done over the past year. Thank you, Councilmember Hart. Councilmember Hall. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so I want to echo everything that's been said so far, but I I'm not going to vote against it. I'm going to abstain from this because I think the conversation should continue. But to me, this is exactly what both Councilmember Sepulveda and Councilmember Mendez have said. Um, a few years ago, um, I watched the debates and the fights over soccer. I watched the fights and debates over Amazon. This is eerily similar. Um, the devil's always in the details, and clearly there's a lot of details that are left out. Um, so I think the conversation should continue. Does it mean it shouldn't happen? It means, to borrow the term from, from Councilmember Mendez, it needs to bake more. Um, We've got to look at the fact that the two previous deals for this same site fell through for a reason. I mean, it's on top of those other numbers and costs. I mean, it's going to cost millions in infrastructure. And clearly, I'm the guy that's just for the last six years been a nut about infrastructure. And as a body, last term and in this one, we can't 
invest 20 or 30 million dollars in the worst areas in the city for infrastructure but we're going to dump it into this site to become a landlord again doesn't mean it shouldn't happen it means we need to cover more details be more um, direct and acute about how we're spending taxpayer dollars um, i think some of the intentions to do this are in the right place um, i trust council member styles to know what her community wants and, and have um, their best interest at heart. Uh, but at this time, where we are, with the priorities that we're supposed to be focused on, it's something I'm gonna have to abstain on and hope that we can continue the conversation. But um, when you look around this city at some of the choices we've made or how we're gonna invest money and what we've walked away from, um, when we again came into this term with a resolution saying we were gonna look at everything as being equitable and inclusive, it's budget season, folks. This is when you are inclusive. This is when you are equitable. We've got to do what I stood in this room and said probably, and I think in my very first meeting in council, at some point the, bit, the budget has got to start to reflect the priorities of the people. And I can tell you for certain, as a native, overwhelmingly native Nashville has been forced out, left out, and displaced. They are not happy. And after what we just did with taxes and knowing they're gonna to have to go up again in about two years, we need to be very, very specific and calculated about how we approach this. Think it may be a good idea. Think it's something we need to continue to discuss. But I think this is very, very preemptive and preliminary. And I don't wanna be in here weeks from now talking about how we deal with Amazon and Nashville Yards when we know we don't put infrastructure in the ground and invest ahead of something happening to create something. We tell everybody else in the city all year long, all around, we don't go in and invest in communities ahead of time. But that's exactly what we're about to do now. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Suara, you're recognized. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, when I first look at the deal, I was initially not in favor of it, uh, but I, I got around to it for a number of reasons. Um, I look at it from different angles. For me, uh, there is a good debt and a bad debt. When you're borrowing money to pay for one-time things that are operational, that is bad. When you borrow money to get assets, that is not a bad debt. And when you're looking at your debt to, to, to equity ratio, because you're going to have an asset, an asset that has the potential to even increase in value with who is gonna be there, uh, that answers part of that question for me. The other part of it also that made me lean towards the eight was also the fact that we do have uh, 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 a tenant, a potential tenant. I know there's a lot about the LOI, I'm not a lawyer, but I know that Vanderbilt stood up yesterday in budget and committed to a lot of things in front of everyone. It comes down to whether we trust Vanderbilt or not. But I do know that even as this uh, uh, progresses, I don't think that we're just going to stay away from it. I thought that the conversation would continue even as the lease mm -hmm. is being uh, ironed out with Vanderbilt is still gonna come, up, come before. So we have the opportunity to make sure that those things that we, we believe are vague or not there for us to get it in there. Uh, finally, I think for me the, the, the final decision in terms of what the community wants and the fact that if we don't own this property, this is the way that I look at it, we will have to rent from whoever, whoever the owner is. Or we may not even have the opportunity to use any part of it. When we go into the parking lot, we go into the spaces where the community wants a, 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 a building to do things. Uh, a colleague was talking about pencil needing a desperate place in Saudis to, to have a place to service the people. We have to go and, and rent. Every time I see Metro pay rents, it's like, what are we doing here? And that's what this may account to, because then someone else buy the old property and we don't have any control over the use of it, or if we have to use it, then we have to go back and say, well, the community want X, Y, and Z. Now we have to go rent from them or buy it from them. Uh, uh, and you know, again, with real estate, how things are moving. So I understand that there is a lot that needs to be ironed out. Uh, uh, we could leave it till next year, but then the price will skyrocket again. I mean, those are the things that we need to, to take into consideration. So for me, finally, it's about, this is something that the community wants. This is a, a, an opportunity for Metro to control 
the part that Metro will be using for the community. And the fact that we have a tenant that will be paying part of it that makes sure that all of that burden is not on Metro, uh, it's not like every other deal to me. I think it has uh, some safeguards in there. And with that, I'm going to vote in, in support. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Nash. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Where I live is about halfway between Underd Oak Small and Hickory Hollow. And I've lived in my same house for the past 48 years, and I watched the rise and fall of Hundred Oaks. And I watched Vanderbilt transform that location uh, into a thriving business again, a great employer. In my discussions with Vanderbilt when uh, this uh, project was announced, uh, they say, you know, originally they couldn't get their workers to volunteer to go to Hundred Oaks. And now everybody wants to go to 100 Oaks because they don't have to fight the traffic and the parking and things around Vanderbilt Hospital. And the same thing is gonna happen out in Hickory Hollow, uh, the Global Mall, if we do this. Um, I agree with uh, Council Lady Suara. This is a good investment. This is, this is building. This does not prevent us from providing operating funds to help fund teachers or teachers helpers. It doesn't help us stop us from also dedicating funds to affordable housing. Matter of fact, there's enough space out there that may end up being one of the locations uh, Metro might uh, and MDHA might want to invest in, in some uh, affordable housing. Uh, we already own <laughs> um, the library, uh, the uh, community center, the ice skating rink, uh, and we got to fix the parking lot out there and, and make investments. And I, and I, I hate that it gets rushed like it is, but at the same time, sometimes that's the way life happens. And I think the opportunity is there now, uh, and I think it is a real opportunity for us. I think uh, I'd love to see that Hickory Hollow Mall area transformed just the way Hundred Oaks uh, Mall area has been transformed and, and bring uh, some of that economic engine there. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, Actually, uh, Councilmember Nash and Suara uh, mentioned some of the things I was going to, but I'd like a little bit more definition because as, as Councilmember Nash mentioned, we already own the properties that surround the property we're considering now. So I would like legal to address if we don't buy it, what are some of the downside that I don't think have been discussed if we own property around, but not the property in the middle where the uh, mall is, what future things could possibly happen as far as our ability to access our property and what expenses we might incur if we don't do this? So I'm trying to figure out who wants that. I'll, Mr. Jamison. I'll take an initial stab and then hand the microphone to the smart guy. Um, so it is correct that we own several uh, uh, facilities in the vicinity, the, the Southeast Community Center, the Fort I Center, the library, and uh, as mentioned before, have uh, parking obligations out there and, and operating agreements uh, with the current property owners that will uh, either contingently expire by virtue of acquisition or if no acquisition eventually expires in the coming years, in which case we're somewhat in a bit of a um, delicate position. It'll probably cost, I think Metro Legal has estimated a $5 million expense in acquisition just to maintain the parking uh, options we would need out there uh, for the existing uses. Um, likewise, if there's no acquisition, there is no community input on what uses go out there um, and would be at the mercy of the private uh, acquiring party. Let me with that hand it to uh, Mr. Cross. I'm, I'm not sure I can add much to that except to reiterate that there is going to be a need for us to provide parking for the existing uses that Metro already has on the site. Um, there, we're operating under a, a declaration and agreement that go back to the 70s. The council in its last meeting approved a conditional amendment to that, to that agreement, uh, but we are likely to need uh, substantial additional parking for the uses that we already have out there. Councilmember Hauser. Thank you. I, I just felt like we did need to mention the what ifs on both sides, both purchasing and not purchasing. So thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so I am gonna go now to Councilmember Stiles who had hit her button, but for some reason the button's not working. She is the sponsor of the bill, so I'm gonna go to her. She's not listed on your sheet. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you. I'm actually gonna have to have IT come back here and assist, but I, I want to reiterate again that many of the questions, thank you for asking your questions, thank you for your comments, and I understand your concerns. This is a moment, it is an opportunity that we need to seize to Council Member Nash's point. Sometimes in life, these things happen. They, they do come quickly, but it is an opportunity to be seized. I would say that this is one of those opportunities. In the community meetings that we've had, the community wants this investment. They want to see something happen on this site. As I said yesterday, this site has been blighted for way too long. The opportunity to be able to utilize the space, to have green space, co-working spaces for nonprofits, entrepreneurship, community kitchens. These are all things that have come up and they are all possible with Vanderbilt's partnership, with Nashville State's partnership. And everyone on the site is already working together right now, working on the operating agreement, working, working on the lease. This is not something that we're just sitting on and waiting but we need you to take this next step and to vote yes so that we can move forward. I would greatly appreciate your yes this evening, colleagues. Thank you, Council Member Stiles. Uh, Council Member Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and I will be very brief. I promise my colleague here, Council Member Slope, that I'll be very brief, brief on, this, uh, on these remarks. Um, and uh, Council Member Soror and Council Member Nash uh, did hit uh, most of the points that I wanted to share. Um, to Council Member, Council Member Stiles' point, this is something that our community desperately wants and has been talking about for such a long time, uh, doing something with this site and making a, a huge investment in this site, and it will greatly benefit the Southeast community. Uh, I am also frustrated with um, the way that we are presented with these deals, that we have to rush and make these decisions. And I completely understand that frustration, um, but this is an opportunity to invest in a community that, that so um, desperately needs it and that is so excited about this. When we were at the announcement, I cannot tell you the joy in the faces of the residents that were there learning about the just the potential that this can happen, um, that this project can happen. So we're asking for your support on this and to vote yes and to stand with us so that we can bring this much needed investment to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Porterfield. Uh, Councilmember Van Rees. Call the question. Right, so Councilmember Van Rees has called the question. So um, we're gonna go back on the board. Uh, again, we're not voting on the resolution. We are voting on the previous question. change you're voting on the previous question Machines, take the vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the previous question prevails. We're up here uh, working very hard on our calculators to make sure we knew what we were doing and we didn't have to worry about it. All right, so we are now ready to vote. Um, we are on RS 2022-1451 by Councilmember Stiles, Porterfield, Allen, and others. A resolution approving two option agreements authorizing the purchase of properties comprising part of the Global Mall site. Mr. Clerk, 
if you would. Uh, we're gonna do this on the board. Um, we are actually voting on the resolution. Obviously, if you're in favor of the resolution, you'll vote aye. If you're opposed, you'll vote no. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. machines take the vote eyes 28 nose 3 four abstentions uh, resolution passes All right we are now ready for item number five uh, RS 2022 1452 by Councilmember Allen uh, it's an initial resolution determining the issue of general obligation bonds to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $46 million. Councilmember Allen, this is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. I think they're all in. Okay. Then I move approval. Okay. Councilmember Allen has moved approval of RS 2022 1452. Um, properly seconded. Any discussion on this one? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of uh, passage of RS 2022-1452, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. All right, so uh, we've got some negative votes. So Mr. Clark, we're gonna go on the board. We are voting on approval of RS 2022-1452. Pursuant to the rules, because we have several no votes, we're gonna go on the board. Okay, open up the machines. We are voting on RS 2022, 1452. Okay, um, all votes are in. Mr. Clark, close the machines, take the vote. Eyes 26, notes three, three abstentions, uh, resolution passes. We're on item number six, RS 2022, 1475 by Councilmember Henderson. Uh, this is the resolution providing amendments to the charter of the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County, in accordance with Article 19, Section 19.01 thereof, and setting forth a brief description of each amendment to be placed upon the ballot. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I have a committee report. All right. Okay. Um, the uh, Charter Revision Committee met uh, to consider uh, three amendments um, in your amendment packet. Um, amendment 1A, um, we voted to approve five in favor, zero against. Uh, amendment 1B, we discussed but did not take a vote. And Amendment 3A, uh, we voted five in favor, and zero against. And so I would uh, move uh, to amend um, first with Amendment 1A um, with a brief, um, or rather uh, if we could start Vice Mayor with Amendment 3A um, with a brief explanation, please. Uh, uh, Councilor Mary Henderson, did, you, uh, did the committee take a vote on the entire resolution? No, sir, we did not. It okay. is our intent to defer. Okay. But we would like to um, put on two housekeeping amendments prior to deferral. Okay, so did the committee take, was there a recommendation to defer the, the resolution? Yes, sir, thank okay. you. There was an additional vote taken. Um, uh, we moved a one meeting deferral uh, 
with a re-referral, obviously, to the okay. committee on May 5th. So, okay, so it's a, uh, the committee recommended a deferral of one meeting with the re-referral back to the committee. Yes, okay, sir, and, and separate uh, uh, votes on two amendments. Okay, so now now what uh, uh, Councilmember Henderson, uh, I believe, wants to do is take up a couple of the amendments and then go back to a motion, um, I think, to defer. Yes, So sir. Okay, so um, we're going to start with uh, which particular amendment, Councilmember Henderson? Um, amendment 3A, please. Okay, so uh, Council Member Henderson um, wants to discuss Amendment 3A. Let's get a motion to approve 3A, and we'll get it before the body. Got a motion to uh, approve 3A, Amendment 3A, properly seconded. Council Member Henderson, you're on the amendment. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, this is one of two amendments uh, discussed in uh, committee this evening after a very lengthy and deliberative uh, process regarding uh, charter revision. What is before you in resolution uh, 2022 1475 is a resolution to amend uh, our charter. And within that, uh, there are four amendments. Uh, these amendments have been uh, discussed in committee up to this point um, with multiple previous meetings. Um, and they have been uh, reviewed as well uh, by, and approved by the charter revision uh, commission on April 11th. You will find in your inboxes on Wednesday of last week from Ms. Darby, a summary of, of this process up to this point. As to amendment uh, 3A, uh, this is on to uh, charter amendment three within this resolution regarding the board of health. Um, and this is a housekeeping amendment um, to make sure that uh, Charter Amendment 2 as to the uh, um, kind of health and fitness standards of MNPD are aligned uh, with the amendment of the Board of uh, Health into the terminology of uh, Chief Medical Officer, uh, Health Director, and so forth. Again, it is a housekeeping amendment and uh, both MNPD and health um, have uh, uh, said that it is uh, okay. Um, and so uh, with that, I would uh, move Amendment 3A, please. All right, so there's a motion to approve Amendment 3A to RS 2022-1475. Again, it was properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of adoption of Amendment 3A uh, for purposes of RS 2022-1475 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendment 3A is passed. So um, uh, again, Council Member Henderson, you're on RS 2022-1475 as amended. What do you want to do next? I would now like to move Amendment 1A, please, Vice Mayor. Okay. Uh, Council Member Henderson has moved Amendment 1A to RS 2022-1475, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Again, uh, the committee uh, voted to approve five in favor, zero against. This is as well uh, a housekeeping amendment. Um, uh, amendment uh, 1 uh, of the resolution uh, is... Uh, looking at Article uh, 19 of the Charter um, and how we bring um, a referendum via petition. The for the ballot language uh, and the resolution as filed um, was kind of placeholder language um, uh, awaiting uh, feedback uh, from legal. Uh, this language as approved by the committee brings more specificity um, uh, and detail um, to the for the ballot language, which is very important for clarity. Um, and uh, with that, um, I would move Amendment 1A. All right, so you've heard the uh, explanation. Uh, there is a motion to approve uh, Amendment 1A. Again, it was properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of Amendment 1A, Torres 2022-1475, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment 1A goes on to the resolution. So now you're on RS 2022-1475 as amended twice. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move a deferral 
of the resolution as doubly amended with a brief uh, explanation. All right, so I've got uh, a motion to defer uh, one meeting. Yes, sir. With a re-referral back to the Charter Revision Committee. Correct. Okay, that's the motion properly seconded. Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. On the deferral, uh, colleagues, as, as this is charter revision, um, and this is a uh, Im important uh, undertaking, uh, we wanted to have a, a deferral um, uh, to give the body um, and the community time uh, to review uh, what uh, is before you, you know, albeit in a one reading resolution, um, but multi-part. Um, so, uh, the first amendment is regarding Article 19. Um, the second uh, regarding MNPD and their employment requirements. The third um, as to Board of Health and the fourth, um, the creation of uh, NDOT. And so um, uh, discussed in committee today um, was amendment also 1B um, offered by uh, uh, Councilwoman Johnston um, it is a more uh, substantive uh, amendment, so I would refer uh, colleagues uh, to uh, their uh, um, amendment packet um, to review that. Um, it is to Charter Amendment 1, um, which is amending Article 19 as to our uh, thresholds for uh, petition for referendum, um, as well as a, um, a whole host of improvements uh, for uh, clarity and continuity. Um, in that area of the charter, which has um, been under much uh, kind of consternation and scrutiny. Um, so uh, colleagues, I would invite you to uh, uh, listen to the discussion, um, the recording that we had in committee today. Again, we did not take a vote um, by agreement with uh, Councilwoman Johnson. We appreciate uh, her uh, uh, bringing the amendment and, and leaving time for some discussion and consideration. Um, so I wanted to uh, share with the body, bring their attention to Amendment 1B um, and uh, explain the deferral. And with that, uh, Vice Mayor, I would renew my motion uh, to defer the resolution as amended. All right, so the, the motion is to defer RS uh, 2022 1475 as amended. Uh, one meeting with the referral back to Charter Revision. Councilor Mendes, you're recognized. I just wanted to quickly acknowledge that there's, there is a third amendment. It's Amendment 2A, and, um, and I understand Councilman Johnson is not going to move that today. We had a good discussion about it in committee, and I know the amendment is going to be in the package again next time. I, I want to make sure that before we vote, she has a chance to at least um, mention what that is and, and let people know that it's, it's coming up again next time we have a meeting. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Mendez. Councilmember Johnston. Thank you. I will just briefly go over um, what my amendment does. So, uh, the the amendment that's in the the original resolution was drafted uh, by Councilman Mendez, and I think. Um, that it's an important amendment to make that will bring a lot of clarity uh, and and get rid of a lot of the ambiguity that is currently in the charter as it relates to petitions. Um, it's caused a lot of litigation and a lot of heartache and angst amongst constituents that have signed said petitions and felt like their voice was stripped from them. So having more uh, of a definitive definition and, and um, stability within the charter I think is important. The one challenge that I see to what the amendment does, which would move the petition, uh, the number of signatures um, from 10% of previous, uh, the, uh, the ver voter turnout of the previous general election, uh, it would change that to 15% of registered voters, which right now is 480,000 registered voters in the county. Uh, we had a record voter turnout with the previous presidential election of 320,000 uh, and some change, uh, but before that, we're usually around 200 to 150 to 200,000 people. So that that is going from around 20,000 people required signatures to 62,000. So I'm, I'm hoping that this, this amendment is seen as friendly because what I wanna do is make it um, 
more um, palatable for the Davidson County voters because we are moving that goalpost. I think it's important to to change to registered to a percentage of registered voters because it's a more stable number than previous general election turnout. Um, but what should that percentage be? So my amendment changes it um, back down to the 10% that we currently have in the charter, um, but does apply it um, to the registered voters, which is a more stable number. It also changes the time frame from 75, which is presented right now, to 90 days. Um, I just feel like 90 is a is a more round number, and so that's why I went with it. Um, and so I hope you will take uh, the the opportunity or the chance to um, for these next two weeks to look over that. Um, and again, I, what I want is for the amendment in its entirety to pass. None of it is severable. And so if we can make this a little bit more um, palatable for the Davidson County voters. Um, uh, that I want to take the opportunity to do that, and I, I hope that I will gain your support. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Johnston. Uh, we are on uh, the motion to defer RS 2022 1475 as amended. Uh, one meeting um, with a re referral back to the Charter Revision Commission. Uh, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Deferral motion passes. Thank you, Councilmember Henderson. Uh, we are now on item number nine, RS 2022-1478 by Gamble, Johnston, Allen, and others. Resolution approving nonprofit partners for technical assistance, marketing, and outreach to assist underserved small businesses to the National Small Business Recovery Fund. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right, budget and finance. Council Member Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and finance uh, voted 11 in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, uh, Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you. This resolution is, is part two to a resolution that we passed several weeks ago allocating $20 million in our ARP funding uh, recommended by the ARP Financial Oversight Committee uh, to address small business relief or to provide small business relief as a result of the pandemic. You recall uh, at the start of the pandemic, uh, we allocated $3 million in CARES funding uh, to provide relief to small businesses. Uh, however, the pandemic has continued much longer and small businesses across the city still suffer uh, from the shutdown and closures and, and lack of doing regular business. And because of that, uh, we the committee is recommending the additional 20 million. Out of that 20 million, 2 million is being designated to work with community partners to make sure that we're reaching all of the small businesses in Nashville with the CARES funding we had a goal of, of making sure 30% of the funding went to minority uh, owned businesses and we exceeded that goal with 32%. However, there were still many uh, businesses, particularly in distressed areas in North Nashville and Southeast Nashville that did not receive funding. And so we're uh, allocating $2 million to work with community partners. There are about 10 identified that sent in proposals uh, to work with Metro to make sure that the small businesses that they've been working with over the years on the boots on the ground have what they need, are aware of these resources and, and get to the table uh, to receive this support. So this uh, resolution today addresses that allocation of $2 million and uh, to go to partner with these community organizations and we ask for your support in this today. All right, so you want a, a motion to approve RS? Motion to approve. Motion to approve RS 2022 1478, properly seconded. Discussion on the resolution, Councilmember Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just need to abstain, or as I learned tonight, I guess we have a recuse button, but that's what I need to do. Thanks. Okay, so Councilmember Sledge will be uh, noted as abstaining on this resolution. And uh, Councilmember Sepulveda. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I need to be marked as abstaining. Or conflict of interest. Okay, so Council Member Sepulveda will also be marked as uh, abstaining on this one. Anybody else? Uh, Council Member Hall? You need to be marked as abstaining? Okay. All right, so I've got Sepulveda, Hall, and Sledge all marked as abstaining on this resolution. Okay, anybody else? All right, we are ready to vote on RS 2022 1478. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, and we've got three abstentions Sepulveda, Sledge, Hall. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, we're now on item number uh, 27, RS 2022 1496 by Councilmember Stiles, uh, Welsh and Toombs, a resolution urging the Tennessee General Assembly to support an amendment to the budget to the state of Tennessee for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022, to increase funding for film and television incentives. Councilmember Stiles is no longer here. Who's got that one? Councilmember Welsh, can you handle this one? Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, you've got uh, rules confirmations. Councilmember Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Rules considered this resolution and uh, voted six in favor, zero against to recommend approval. Okay. Uh, back to you, Councilmember Welsh. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm not really sure what the lead sponsor what, wanted to do with this or why she pulled this off consent. So I think that I might move to defer one meeting. Okay. Well, since we don't know. All right, so the motion is to defer one meeting. Motion is for one meeting properly seconded. Okay, I've got Council Member Murphy before Council Member Toombs. Hold on. Council Member Murphy, you recognize. Thank you. I just wanted to, I, before digging through my emails, um, and I asked another Council Member, I was thinking that Appropriations Committee at the state was this week. Maybe today's Tuesday, today, tomorrow, next day. I'm not sure that this will is timely to get it there to be considered. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, uh, similar sentiment. Um, session is, is wrapping up, so it wouldn't be appropriate to defer this because um, it wouldn't get... Uh, to the appropriate folks in time, perhaps Councilwoman Stiles just wanted to speak on behalf of the resolution. Um, I am happy to withdraw my motion to defer. All right, so the, so the motion to defer is withdrawn. Um, can I so, just move for approval? Uh, you, can move for, you can move for approval. I was going to recommend if you want to roll it to the hill of the resolution since somebody called Councilmember Stiles and just check to make sure she knew we know what she wanted to do. But I believe that Councilmember Murphy and Councilmember Toombs are correct. They're going to run out of time. Councilmember Murphy, I'm going to come back to you. Um, so I am just checking the, an email over calendars for the legislature, and, it, and I just... It, I do have an email saying that for for finance committee, the deadline for amendments uh, for the budget bill was extended until noon on the 19th, so noon today. And I can try to find when that committee is meeting. But again, I, I'm this, this is something that may not be very timely and may be more appropriate to just be contacting our legislators. Um, this, this is something that I would really like. I don't know if it's appropriate for rules committee or something. This has been an issue last term and this term that we are sending things up to the legislature that are not always timely or appropriate in, in terms of the most effective way. And so I, I guess, uh, not the will of the, of the body, but I, again, th this may not be the most uh, appropriate approach to, to get our, uh, our point across of what we would like to see. All right. Uh, I think Councilmember Toombs recommended a motion to approve. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, and I believe there's already an amendment that's been filed, um, which is the purpose of the resolution. Uh, I'd still, I renew my motion to uh, move for approval. Okay. So Councilmember Toombs has moved for approval of RS 2022-1496, uh, properly seconded. Discussion. Councilmember Sepulveda, you recognize it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just got off the phone with her. She she does want the the vote to go forward, so I support Council Member Tim's motion. Okay, so we are now uh, we're on RS 2022-1496 uh, by Council Member Stiles, Welsh, and Toombs. The motion is to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of RS 2022-1496 say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution passes. All right, we're on item number 29, RS 2022-1498 by Council Member Hart. Resolution expressing the Metropolitan Council's support for hosting the 2026 National League of Cities NLC City Summit in Nashville, Tennessee. Council Member Hart, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports. Uh, rules, Council Member Pulley. 
Council Member Pulley. Council Member Pulley. There you are. Uh, Rules Committee report on 2022-1498 is item number 29. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Rules Committee considered this uh, and uh, voted six in favor, zero against to recommend approval. All right, thank you. Councilmember Hart, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I just wanted to stand as the sitting president of the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials and thank the city of Nashville for its willingness to host the 2026 uh, summit for the National League of Cities. Um, want my colleagues to know that the vice mayor and a representative from the Convention's Visitors Corporation attended the Congressional City Conference in March and made a dynamic presentation. Uh, a commercial was done and uh, told the people to come on back. And I know that in 2015, the uh, National League of Cities were here, and that was the first year that I had become a council member at large, and I've been a member of NLC and NBC Leo since that time. So I just wanted to uh, encourage people to vote in favor of this and wanted to thank the city of Nashville for being such a welcoming city for this convention. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. I will say that Council Member Hurt also was part of that presentation and uh, she ended the um, she ended the pitch and so she actually would be the person that closed the deal. So there you go. Uh, we are on resolution RS 2022-1498 for passage. Uh, uh, I've got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes. We're on item number 30, RS 2022-1499 by Council Member Evans. Resolution recognizing the month of May as Nurses Month and celebrating registered nurses' accomplishments and efforts to improve our health care system. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Uh, Council Member Pulley, you've got this one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Rules Committee considered this and recommended approval. Five in favor, zero against, with one abstention. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Evans. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, considering this resolution to support the month of May as Nurses Month. Uh, nurses are integral to, in, integral to our um, healthcare infrastructure in Nashville, and uh, we'd like to use May as a, a time to thank a nurse. So thank you for voting in favor. I move approval. All right, so um, the motion is to approve, properly seconded. We have one abstention. Councilman Murphy needs to abstain. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution RS 2022 1499 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, with one abstention, Councilman Murphy, resolution passes. All right, so that takes us through um, the um, resolutions. We have one late filed resolution. This is by Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, it is a resolution approving an application for a rebuilding American infrastructure with sustainability and equality raise grant from the United States Department of Transportation to aid in the community outreach plan and design of the East Bank Boulevard project. Council Member O'Connell, uh, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to get committee reports, please. All right. Um, uh, Council Member Young, you go first. Transportation. We recommended approval, not in favor, zero against. All right. And um, transport and budget. Um, who's got the budget report? Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval, nine in favor, two not voting. Okay, so we got the committee report now. Uh, I believe you're gonna have to move to uh, suspend the rules to get this because it's a late filed resolution. I believe that is true. Do we need a um, report from the Rules Committee prior to that? He is ready to go, Council Member Pulley. And Rules Committee heard this and had no objection to the suspension of the rules. All right, um, so Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to suspend the rules, please. There you go. There's a motion to suspend the rules. Anybody have any objections to suspension of the rules on this one? Seeing none, rules were suspended. Councilmember O'Connell, we've got the committee reports in. You're on your resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval of brief comment. All right. So Councilmember O'Connell moves approval of uh, late file resolution properly seconded back to you. Thank you. Um, this is uh, a it's a request for a federal planning grant um, that would apply principally to the East Bank. Um, and I absolutely support the um, the nature of the planning that is being done here. Uh, initial concepts have showed a bridge connecting the East Bank uh, through Napier 
uh, with additional infrastructure that I think would be actually potentially detrimental to the community there. Um, we, I'm all support, I'm full support of looking at uh, options for infrastructure and transit that add connectivity to the East Bank. I just wanna be very sensitive to uh, one of the most fragile communities I represent. Um, and so that is input I've provided on the front end um, and we'll continue to provide if we are awarded this grant. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member O'Connell. Um, Council, uh, we've got discussion. All right, so it's been moved uh, properly. Seconded, Council Member Withers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, appreciate Councilmember O'Connell's comments. Uh, uh, the East Bank planning study that Councilmember Parker and I have been engaged in with our community for a while has, has had a lot of really robust uh, discussion to date, and I know that will continue. And, and I can certainly uh, uh, definitely empathize with folks who were uh, a little bit surprised maybe to see uh, a bridge proposal crossing uh, the river in an area that hadn't had a lot of discussion to date. Just wanna do remind folks that this is a, uh, uh, as Councilmember O'Connell stated, this is a planning grant. This will actually help to fund additional design work and lots of community engagement for those surrounding communities uh, in the future. And so uh, I know those, those important discussions can continue only if we uh, work on this uh, funding. Um, and, um, uh, you know, just again, this, this is a planning grant. It's not a capital grant. It allows additional design and uh, the community engagement process to move forward. Um, one thing as well, I, I know there is a lot of discussion with regard to the stadium itself. Just want to remind everyone that these things are difficult to parse out. I know because of the geographic overlap as well as the timing overlap, but the purpose of the East Bank planning study has always been about improving connectivity generally. Um, uh, from, from north to south, and so this isn't necessarily tied to any one facet. It's just that the road system that we have today was bisected by the interstate, which was mostly designed to carry traffic to the downtown area and not to East Nashville. So we, we've known for a long time that we've needed to take a look at those street grid networks and transit opportunities. Um, even with the uh, uh, very low level of use of a lot of this land that we have today, it can be very challenging to get across James Robertson Parkway or Shelby or any of those streets, that's today with almost nothing being used on those on that land. Uh, with Envision Casey, which lines up along Fifth, we're adding almost the entire Lachlan Springs neighborhood on top of the Casey uh, number of units. So obviously that's gonna generate traffic. Then once you add in what we hope will be a significant number of additional housing units on the East Bank, all these things coming together are, are gonna require significant uh, reimagining of, of uh, transit as well as uh, additional bridges. It's just the way that it is. So um, I, I think this is great to have this um, federal grant opportunity that's come before us so that we can continue that engagement. Just also wanna remind everyone really quickly that uh, Mayor Cooper's office has really committed to uh, applying for federal, federal and state grants whenever possible. This is only one grant application. This doesn't mean that this precludes other grant applications. Um, so just wanna keep that in mind for folks that there may very well be other opportunities to apply for grants for additional infrastructure and, uh, and design work in other parts of town. So would hope that colleagues would consider supporting this today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Weathers. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I am wholeheartedly supportive of additional connectivity. I understand how important connectivity is for communities. Uh, however, I will be abstaining on this because we're, we talk, we're investing money in the East Bank and we're studying what to put in the East Bank, but the West Trinity Lane Corridor and the areas north of the river are developing now. We need better infrastructure today. We need better connectivity today. And I can tell you that my residents have been talking about a bridge to improve connectivity in our area for years. And I think that we should be given equal importance. Um, I hear that there may be other grant opportunities. My constituents are aware of the federal dollars that are out there for these types of projects. And I want some attention paid to my constituents and to our infrastructure and connectivity needs. Okay, Council Member will be noted as abstaining. Council Member Mendez? I'm gonna abstain for the same reason. I've heard the same thing um, from Council Member Toombs uh, district for a while. And um, the idea of just studying a bridge in one spot 
um, when, uh, I don't know how far it is down the river, but you can basically see from one place to the other. Um, and I doubt we're gonna have two bridges there. So it, it should be, it's a little too narrow. I'm gonna abstain. And the other thing I, I just wanna push back a little bit on, there's no conceivable way to say this is not about the Titans. Um, the, the whole, like we're gonna find, see it later this year and you know we get to read about it in the paper now, but there's, there's no football stadium new or renovated without building a new neighborhood to build a tax base for the sales tax recapture that got passed in state law last year. And and the road fits in because you have to rebuild the neighborhood in order to get an update um, to the uh, stadium or to get a new stadium. So they really are inextricably linked. And ultimately, I do think that um, the extended um, East Bank um, <laughs> from when it turns into East Bank to North Bank and District 2 ought to be studied together. Um, so um, I'll abstain on this one also with Council Member Toombs. All right, thank you, Council Member. Okay, um, again, we're on a late file resolution by Council Member O'Connell. Um, I know we have two abstentions. I think we are ready to vote. Councilmember O'Connell had moved for approval and it had been properly seconded. Seeing nobody else in the queue, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of this late file resolution by Councilmember O'Connell say aye. aye. Opposed, no. And then we have two abstentions, Councilmember Mendez and Councilmember Toombs. Councilmember Gamble also abstaining. Anybody else? Councilmember Hall abstaining. Councilmember Welsh abstaining. We've got five abstentions. Anybody else? All right, uh, resolution passes. All right, we are now ready to do bills on introduction and first reading. Uh, anything needs to be bumped off of um, uh, bills on introduction or first reading? Seeing none, if there's no objection, we'll take them all at the same time. Is there a motion to adopt all bills on introduction first reading? Okay. Got a motion, properly seconded. All those in favor of adoption of bills on introduction first reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion passes. We have a late filed uh, bill. Uh, this is filed by Council Members Taylor and Syracuse. It's an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1146. Proposed historic landmark overlay district to include a portion of property located at 2208 Ellison Place in North the northern corner of Ellison Place and Louise Avenue, Zone CS. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Um, Council Member Taylor, you're recognized on your late filed bill. Thank you. Um, went to rules and um, I think everything was good in rules. So Went to uh, rules, okay. <laughs> Council Member Pulley. Yes, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, this was heard at Rules Committee and nobody had any objection to the late file nature of the ordinance. All right, Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Great, this is uh, part of the exit in historic overlay. You need to suspend the rules to get I'm it. I'm sorry, thank yeah, you. No problem. Thank you. I'd uh, like to suspend the rules. Okay, so Council Member uh, Taylor has moved to suspend the rules to get this one in front of us tonight on first reading. Any objections to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules are suspended. You're on your bill. Thank you. So again, this is... Um, adding uh, the restrictions and materials with the historic overlay of exit in. Um, and this is a companion bill that needs to track again with that historic overlay. All right, so you've heard an explanation. Council Mayor Taylor wants to move the bill on first reading, properly seconded. Any discussion about getting this one on first reading tonight? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to put this bill on first reading or to pass on first reading tonight, say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, bill passes on first reading. Thank you, Council Member Taylor. We're now on bills on second reading. We're on page 17 of, at least page 17 of my calendar. Bills on second reading. Um, I'm gonna go through uh, the list of uh, those um, ordinances that are on the consent agenda. Um, and then we'll go back and make sure we need to see if we need to bump anything. First one I've got is, um, First one I've got is um, item number 61, 1171. Item 61, 1171, 1172, 1173, 1174, 1175, 1176, 1177, 1178, 1179, 1180, 
is uh, um, item number 61, BL 2022-1171 by Councilmember O'Connell. Ordinance to provide for the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period beginning at 6 o'clock a.m. on June 8, 2022 and ending at midnight on June 13, 2022 relative to the use of these areas in conjunction with the 2022 CMA Fest. Uh, BL 2022-1172 by Councilmember Allen. Ordinance approving a, a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and CSS International Inc. for consulting, development, implementation, and managed services for Hyperion, EPM Cloud, HCM Cloud, R12, and Taylor Software Platforms. BL 2022-1173, Councilmember Allen. Ordinance approving a master agreement between the Metropolitan Government and J.P. Morgan Chase Bank for purposes of stabilizing the net expenses incurred in the purchase of gasoline and or diesel fuel. Uh, BL 2022-1174, item number 64 by Councilmember Allen. Ordinance approving a master agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Cargill Inc. Purpose of stabilizing the net expenses incurred in the purchase of gasoline and or diesel fuel. Item 65 by Councilmember Vercher, BL 2022-1175. Ordinance readopting the code of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County prepared by the Municipal Code Corporation including supplemental replacement pages thereof containing certain ordinances of a general and permanent nature enacted on or before October 5th, 2021. Uh, BL 2022-1176, item 66, O'Connell, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon easement rights for six properties located at the southeast corner of Hay Street and 16th Avenue North, formerly a portion of alleys number 373 and 380, BL 2022-1177. Allen, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government acting through the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services uh, to enter into agreement with Rock Block Flats, LLC to provide improved public sanitary sewer service through construction of an improved stormwater system. Next item is item number 68, Bill 2022-1178, Syracuse, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept a permanent easement for the Del Rose Drive Stormwater Improvement Project for two properties located at 120 and 122 Del Rose Drive. Bill 2022-1179 by Gamble, Withers, and Young. Uh, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements. Property located at Brick Church Pike, unnumbered, also known as Mulberry, Down, Mulberry Downs Phase 4. Item number 70, Gamble, Withers, and Young, BL 2022-1180. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing fire hydrant assemblies and to accept new sanitary uh, water uh, sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 3517 Brick Church Pike, also known as Mulberry Downs Phase 5. Uh, item 71, Gamble, Withers, and Young, BL 2022-1181. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary water and uh, sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for property located at 3517. 17 Brick Church Pike, also known as Mulberry Downs Phase 6. Uh BL 2022 1182, O'Connell, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville to accept a new sanitary sewer manhole and easements for property located at 1721B, 6th Avenue North, also known as 6th Avenue North Townhomes. BL 2022 1183, Hager, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer main appurtenances and easements for property lo located at 3233 Lakeshore Drive, also known as Lakeshore Drive Phase 1. Item number 74, Bradford, Withers, and Young. Bill 2022-1184, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing water main and easements and to accept a new water main, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for property located at 2 Dale Parkway. Item number 75, Bill 2022-1185, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water main, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for property located at 3214 Murfreesboro Pike, also known as Hamilton Hills. Bill 2022-1186, Roberts, Withers, and Young. Um, this is item 76, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assembly, and easements for property located at 7256 Centennial Place. Bill 2022-1187 by Councilmember Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer manholes for property located at 4G Trimble Street, also known as Wharf Avenue Townhomes. Bill 2022-1188, Sledge, Withers, and Young. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to ban existing sanitary 
enter sewer and water main sanitary sewer and manholes, fire hydrant assemblies and easements, and to accept new sanitary sewer and water main sanitary sewer and manholes, fire hydrant assemblies and easements for 16 properties located at 8th Avenue South and Bass Street, also known as the 910 8th Avenue South development. Uh, and the last one is BL 2022-1212, it's item number 80. Tombs and Allen, ordinance approving a participation agreement between the Metropolitan Government through the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation and CRPWP Alta Metro Center owner LLC for trail out improvement at the Metro Center Levy Greenway. Anything needs to be bumped off of that calendar. There was a lot of sanitary mo uh, manhole stuff on that one. We are ready to go. I need some committee reports. Uh, Council Member Suara, you've got budget and finance. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and finance considered Bill 2020, 1172, 1173, 74, 77, and 1212. And we, fo uh, we voted to recommend approval. Uh, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, thank you. Government operations, Council Member Hancock. Council Member Hancock. There you go. 1172. Yes, Bill 2022, 1172. Can you guess? Eight in favor, zero against. All right. Planning and zoning, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and considered ordinance numbers BL 2022 1171, 1172, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 1181, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88 and 1212 and recommended approval of each of those items, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, public health and safety, Council Member Evans. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public health and safety considered uh, BL 2022-1171 and voted six in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Bradford, you've got uh, public facilities. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public facilities, we held, we heard BL 2022-1171 and BL 2022-1212, both approved, six in favor, none against. Okay. Uh, Council Member Pulley, I think you had one. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, rules considered BL 1175 and recommended approval, six in favor, zero against. All right, and Council Member Young, last, um, last report, transportation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We considered BL 2022, 1176, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, and 88, and recommended approval, nine in favor, zero opposed, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, Councilman Young has moved approval of the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the second reading consent agenda say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. All right, thank you. Okay, now we're going to pick up the bills that were not on the consent agenda. The first one is item 54, Bill 2021-831 by O'Connell, Bradford, and Parker. Ordinance amending section 6.28.030, 17.04.060, and 17.20.030 of the Metropolitan Code to amend the definition of short-term rental property not owned or occupied and to amend parking requirements related to short-term rental property. Councilmember O'Connell, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, withdrawing this bill. Okay. Um, bill is withdrawn. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Okay, we're on the next one, BL 2021-971, ordinance to amend uh, Title II of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to create an Office of Housing and Homelessness. O'Connell, Evan, Sawara, and a host of others are the sponsors. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I believe this one is deferred by rule. This one is automatically deferred by rule, so it'll be deferred to the next meeting. All right, item number 56, BL 2022-1164 by Sledge, O'Connell, Hauser, and others. Ordinance to amend section 9.30.010 of the Metropolitan Code of Law pertaining to construction noise. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, government operations, Council Member Hancock, you're recognized. Government operations voted unanimously. Eight in favor, zero against, to substitute the bill. 
And then what happened? And then we voted eight in favor, zero against to defer one meeting. Okay, so you voted, you approved the substitute and then voted to defer the bill unanimously. Unanimous. Thank you. Councilmember Sledge, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move the substitute with a brief explanation. All right, so Councilmember Sledge moves the substitute um, for bill 2022-1164, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Thank you, uh, colleagues. This is um, in consultation with the Codes Department regarding how we enforce and really moving us from a decibel-based noise, um, uh, I guess you'd say enforcement, to work enforcement. It does not change any of the hours of operations that uh, construction is allowed for. It does increase the, the zoning um, to which it applies. On your desk is a map um, of the zoning right now that is residential zoning in our county to which there is no construction noise um, regulation. That's DTC, that's us. I know it was a great mystery, mystery song. Um, so, so those are SPs, those are mixed use, those are any, any zoning that has residential within it. That's what the bill and the substitute would apply to. As you'll hear in a minute, I'm going to move to defer once the substitute's approved one meeting in order to continue conversation with codes about um, uses that are outdoor construction that may not need to apply to this, um, primarily concrete pours, um, and then also to work um, with our office and with Councilmember O'Connell regarding the DTC to make sure that it's tailored well to their needs. So with that, I would ask for approval of the substitute with the knowledge that I will then move to defer one meeting and re-refer to the Government Operations Committee. Okay, so Councilmember Sledge has moved for approval of the substitute for Bill 2022-1164, again, properly seconded. Questions on the substitute? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the substitute on Bill 2022-1164 say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes on the bill, uh, Councilmember Sledge, Bill 2022-1164 as substituted, you're on your bill. Thank you, I would like to defer the bill as substituted one meeting with the re-referral to government ops. Okay, uh, the motion is to defer one meeting with the re-referral back to government operations, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Deferral motion uh, is adopted and will be re-referred back to government operations. Uh, we're on item number 57, BL 2022-1166 by Houser Allen and Withers. Ordinance approving a lease agreement binding between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting binding through the Metropolitan Board of Education, the Bellevue Civic Association. Council Member Houser, you're recognized on your bill. Yes, and I'll, I'd like to move this for an indefinite deferral. Okay, so... Um, Let's see, there are no committee reports. In. All the committee reports are in. So Council Member Houser has moved to defer this one indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion? None. All those in favor of the motion to defer indefinitely say aye. Opposed, no. This one's deferred indefinitely. Thank you, Council Member Houser. Uh, we're on BL 2022-1168 uh, by Council Member Stiles and ordinance to amend sections 9.20.020 and 9.20.060 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to amend the noise provisions relative to motor vehicles and to authorize the Department of Codes Administration to enforce excessive noise provisions. Council Member Stiles is not here, so this one will be deferred. Councilmember Sepulveda signed on to this bill? Okay. Councilmember Sepulveda, um, uh, you're recognized. I'd like to move uh, to defer to the first meeting of July. Okay, we, let's get a committee report in. Committee Government, reports. Government operations. Councilmember Hancock. After a heated discussion and fear of non-unanimous voting, we voted eight in favor, zero against to defer to the first meeting in July. This, uh, so um, Council Member Sepulveda, you wanna move this one to the first meeting in July? Yes. Okay, so the motion is to defer to the first meeting in July properly, seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, we're voting on a deferral motion, first meeting in July, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer passes. Uh, we're on item number 59, BL 2022-1169 by Council Members Benedict, Allen, and Weathers. Ordinance approving a lease agreement binding between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting binding through the Metropolitan Board of Education, East End Prep. Council Member Benedict, you're recognized. There you are. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. I got budget and finance. Council Member Suara. 
At the request of the sponsor, uh, budget and finance voted to defer one meeting, 10 in favor, zero against. Okay, uh, who's got the education committee report? Council Member Sepulveda. Uh, we're on BL 2022-1169. Education committee voted five in favor, zero against for one meeting deferral. Okay, and planning and zoning, Council Mayor Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The planning and zoning committee uh, considered this ordinance and re recommended a one meeting deferral at the request of the sponsor, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, Council Member Benedict, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I moved for a one meeting deferral, please. All right. It's a long way to get to the one meeting deferral. All right, uh, so um, the request of the motion is to um, defer this one meeting properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion of one meeting say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, uh, motion to defer one meeting is adopted. Uh, BL 2022-1170, this is item number 60. Allen, Sledge, Van Rees, and others. Ordinance authorizing the Health and Educational Facilities Board of the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes from its lessees operating mixed income multifamily housing facilities, including housing for low and moderate income persons and approving the program for determining qualifications and eligibility for such payments. Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, you've got affordable housing. Councilmember Parker. Uh, affordable housing considered the bill. We voted uh, nine in favor of approval and one against. Okay. And budget and finance, Councilmember Swara. Budget and finance voted eight in favor, two against. Okay. All right, mm -hmm. Councilmember Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This is um, a bill that is uh, born out of a recommendation from the Affordable Housing Task Force. Our public hearing earlier tonight began with, uh, our public comment period began with two speakers talking about the importance of uh, creating options for housing affordability in Nashville and the Affordable Housing Task Force came up with some very specific solutions and this is, um, I think one of the ones that hopefully has great potential to to move the needle on uh, creating more options for people for uh, being able to not pay most of their income on, on rent. Um, what this one does is works with the Housing and Educational Facilities Board to provide a tax abatement essentially um, so that the rent can be lower for a specific number, a specific percentage um, of, the, uh, of the units that are there. Uh, working with our new Division of Housing who would oversee this program, uh, they've come up with several different tiers that would give a greater abatement for deeper affordability and also would uh, give greater abatement if it's in the urban zoning overlay, which is the area of highest opportunity where it's even uh, the most difficult to access housing where the jobs are. So it's, it's, uh, it's work to geographically and economically incentivize what we need the most of. Um, the Health and Education Facilities Board was chosen because they are the one entity that state law allows to provide uh, payment in lieu of taxes um, for multifamily apartments, which is specifically what this is targeted at. So this would provide uh, an option for deconcentration of poverty where there are market units uh, as well as units that are income qualified in the same building, which has been shown to be a very effective model. This would be a 15 year abatement and we do have a cap of $3 million uh, per year on this because uh, we understand that this would be foregoing uh, property taxes that might otherwise go into the general fund. And I understand that Councilman Member Mendez reminds us that that's, it's important for us to be thoughtful about how we specifically designate money. And I appreciate that. Therefore, we have a $3 million cap on this, um, but, but that hopefully could generate anywhere from uh, 200 to 500 units based on my calculations. I have on it, put on everyone's desk um, information that shows what the area median income is. That's a, a calculation we frequently hear. And then from there, um, how this uh, specific tier system would apply to that. And I've shown a specific example in there and perhaps some other council members would speak to that as well. So this is not uh, the only tool that will solve affordable housing, but it is one that has been recommended and I think it can make a substantial difference and I ask for everyone's support. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Council Member Allen is moving BL 2022-1170 uh, for passage on second reading. 
properly seconded. Uh, discussion on the bill, council member Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. So um, I appreciate the hard work that the sponsor has put into this bill. And while she was working on this separately, I've been working on a similar idea relative to a potential SP in my district that's going to create about 750 apartments. It also will have a local grocer and restaurants there. There has never been a development of this scale in District 7, and there's a real opportunity to change people's lives for the better. This particular development is willing to work with me to make sure affordability remains in this location, because today on this land, there's a HUD development that's over 50 years old, and it's not able to be effectively renovated. The owner plans to build a new HUD development for any existing residents who would like to move to another location. For any residents who want to stay in the area, I've been working with myriad stakeholders to help them stay. There's 226 kids from zero to 18 years old and 119 kids enrolled in MNPS. It's not the role of any developer to tell those kids where they should go to school. We'll have a chance to talk about those specific during the SP legislation here, which includes a lot of protections for existing residents. That's already been put in place, so I don't want anybody to hear me talk about this and be scared that these folks are being told to move. That is not the case at all. Glad to talk about that outside of uh, my three minutes here. Nevertheless, I cannot guarantee, um, so even though there are protections, I cannot guarantee that there will be a place for these residents in their current neighborhood in South Inglewood. This legislation gives the opportunity for those existing residents to say, although this needs to work for the sake of protecting Nashvillians, it also has to make sense as a practical and responsible use of taxpayer money. But the good news is that it is. Not only can we generate affordable housing through this bill, we also can generate additional rev revenue. Here's the example. If you've got a pencil, Put it down, here we go. The parcels today are uh, that are a part that are slated to be developed as a part of this FSP generate $119,000 in property tax revenue. After the development is built, which should be around 2024, 2025, the new property tax revenue is expected to be $3.2 million. Today, it's 119,000. It's anticipated that the property value will be $250 million and the tax collections will be $3.2 million. That's more than $3 million than, than what we received today. There is significant infrastructure that we need to improve with some of that money, but it's, a, again, a significant revenue stream for the city. So um, the abatement could be as much as 2.56 million and it would provide as many as 300 affordable units out of the 750 units. This developer wants to do this with me. This is the tool that will help us keep South Inglewoodians in South Inglewood. So I have plenty more to say about this if anybody wants to yield their time to me, but I would really ask for your approval. It's going to make a huge difference in people's lives in my district. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Benedict. Council Member House, are you recognized? I just have a question. How will it be tracked that the this is really going to be affordable long term? In other words, is there going to be a, uh, annual reporting showing what the uh, rents collected are, or just the, enlighten us on how we're going to make sure this continues being affordable for years down the road? Thank Cass you, Councilmember Allen. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, the uh, Director of Housing, which is the new department that we've created within the Planning Department, will be responsible for an annual report on this, and the, uh, the program that's shown as an attachment here spells out the specific information that they'll be providing, which will be how many units are they providing, what, is, what are the income qualifications, um, and, and how much of a discount were those tenants able to receive. So that information will be provided on an annual basis. All right. Council Member Hauser. Got it. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Benedict, for all of that wonderful information. And Vice Mayor, if I could, I would like to yield my time to my colleague to finish uh, what she wanted to share. Uh, time is yield yielded to Councilmember Benedict. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. I appreciate that. So after the development is built, um, the, the, the revenue is, again, is going to be 3.2 million. The potential abatement is 2.56 million. We've got 300 units that we're going to be built oh, by with 2.56 million. I'd remind this body that the Barnes Fund over the past three years has had an allocation of $10 million. And I don't recall the number of units that the Department of Housing, or I mean that um, our affordability folks have shared with me, but it's this is a huge win. And, um, and it's all within the UZO. It's on a bus line that leads to the 
us the WeGo line that has the highest ridership in the city. It makes sense, it's in the urban core. Those 300 affordable units are gonna be one, two, and three bedrooms, and it's exactly the type of investment that Nashvillians are looking for, and they continue to demand from us. This is a win-win-win for the city, it is for the developer as well, but most importantly, it is for Nashvillians. Of the existing 195 apartment residents, all of them could stay in their location under this plan. If we don't begin to take bold steps to fix our housing crisis, then we will not get the momentum that we really need to solve this problem. Tonight we heard from two speakers earlier that we need to focus on affordable housing. And we, hear from many, we heard from many people in the public hearing on March 15th that this is their top priority. More than anything else, their top priority is to create affordable housing, and this bill does that. Again, this is a phenomenal tool that will help people in District 7 and throughout the city, and I ask for your support and your vote of um, uh, a yes vote. Thank you. All right, thank and you, thank you again, Councilwoman Porterfield. All right, thank you, Councilmember Benedict. All right, so we are on BL 2022-1170. Councilmember Allen has moved passage of this bill on second reading. It's been properly seconded. Um, other discussion? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. We're voting on this bill on second reading. All those in favor of 1170 for passage on second reading, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, so we have one no. Anybody else a no? Any abstentions? All right, so Councilmember Mendez votes no. Anybody else? Okay, uh, bill passes on second reading, and we've got, um, we're indicating that Councilmember Mendez has voted no. Okay, we are now on I believe the last, uh, the last bill on second reading that we need to go over is item number 79. It's bill 2022-1189 by council members Murphy, Withers, and Young, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements and to accept new ones uh, for property located at 3800 Charlotte Avenue. Council member Murphy, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Uh, you have got planning and zoning. Council member Withers. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee considered this item, BL 2022-1189, and recommended a two-meeting deferral at the request of the sponsor. Uh, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, transportation, Councilmember Young. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we also recommended a deferral of two meetings at the request of the sponsor, nine in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Thank you. This is um, a, this actually used to be the Metro property from those of you last term, if you remember our great salt debate. Um, this is a property that is being developed and yet again easements, but do not wish to reach out to this council member or the neighbors. They also had a bunch of raw sewage this week, so that is why I'm deferring it to meetings and hopefully they can be better neighbors. That's my motion. Thank the you. The motion is to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this bill is deferred to meetings. Okay. Uh, we're now on bills on third reading, and there's a bunch of them on consent. Just uh, hang with me. Um, item 81 is on consent. BL 2021-854 is on consent. Uh, and item 84, 1107 is on consent. 1114 is on consent. 1136 is on consent. 1137 on consent. 1138 on consent. 1139 on consent. 1143 on consent. 1144 on consent. 1145 on consent. Uh, 1146 is not on consent. 1147 on consent. 1148 on consent. 1149 on consent. 1150 on consent. 1151 on consent. 1153 on consent. 1157 on consent. 1158 on consent. 1159 on consent, 1160 on consent, 1162 on consent, 1165 on consent, and 1167 on consent. 1165, okay, so it needs to come off. 1165 needs to come off of consent. That's item 107. 
Okay, anything else needs to come off? Okay, all right. <clears throat> all right, here we go. <clears throat> BL 2021 854 by Councilmember Van Rees, ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by applying a neighborhood landmark overlay district property located at 40, 435 Old Hickory Boulevard at the southeast corner of Donna Drive and Old Hickory Boulevard, zoned RS 21.44 acres to permit small event and short term rentals. Uh, next item on consent is uh, BL 2022 1107 by Councilmember Roberts, uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R6 to RM15A zoning for property located at 824 Watts. Lane, approximately 430 feet southeast of Charlotte Pike. It's 1.2 acres. Uh, BL 2022 1114, Mendes, Evans, Rosenberg, and others. Ordinance amending sections 13.08.080 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws pertaining to the use of flight display scanner technology to add a definition of personally identifiable information. Uh, Next one is BL 2022 1136 by Councilmember Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RM2 to SP zoning for property located at 820 Young's Lane, approximately 200 feet south of Young's Lane, 4.0 acres to permit 21 multifamily residential units. And the companion bill, BL 2022 1137. Uh, um, proposed specific plant zoning district located at 820 Young's Lane, approximately 200 feet south of Young's Lane. It's 4.0 acres. Proposed ordinance to require certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, BL 2022 1138 by Councilmember Taylor. Ordinance to amend Title 17 uh, by change from CF and MUIA to SP zoning for properties located at 1901, 1903 Church Street, 1902 Hay Street, southwest corner of 19th Avenue North and Church Street, 0.97 acres to permit a mixed use development. And the companion bill is 1130. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1901, 1903 Church Street, 1902 Hay Street, southwest corner of 19th Avenue North and Church Street. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. The next one is item number 90, BL 2022-1143 by Councilmember Sledge. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R6 to SP zoning for property located at 1020 Southside Court, southeast quarter of South Street and 12th Avenue South. It's 4.5 acres to permit 355 multifamily residential units. And the companion bill is BL 2022-1143. Four, ordinance authorized building material restrictions requirements. Uh, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1020 Southside Court, southeast corner of South Street and 12th Avenue South. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. BL 2022 1145, it's item number 92 by Councilmember Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 to R10 zoning for properties located at 1816 and 1818. Aston Avenue, approximately 365 feet east of Hyde's Ferry Road, 0.71 acres. Item number 94, BL 2022 1145. By Councilmember Parker, Parker, an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS to R6A zoning for property located at 125 A, B, and C, Kingston Street, approximately 670 feet east of Dickerson Pike, 0.19 acres. Item number 95, BL 2022-1148 by Councilmember Welsh. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS 7.5 to R8 zoning for properties located at 193 and 201 Antioch Pike, approximately 250 feet east of Kinross Avenue, 0.45 acres. Um, 45 acres. BL 2022 1149 by Councilmember Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 to R10 zoning for property located at 1804 County Hospital Road, approximately 225 feet east, uh, northeast of Doak Avenue, 0.51 acres. <coughs> Um, BL 2022 1150, item number 97. Council Member Taylor, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS and RS5 to SP zoning for properties located at 1701, 1703, 1705, 1707, 1709, 1711, 9th Avenue North and 901 Buchanan Street, approximately 360 feet east of 10th Avenue North is 1.0 acres. Permit a mixed use development. BL 1151 by Council Member Parker. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1312 Joseph Avenue, approximately 60 feet south of East Moreland Street. It's 0.16 acres. BL 2022 1153, that's item number 99 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from RS5 to R6 zoning, property located at 110A Fern Avenue, approximately 140 feet west of Birch Avenue. It's 0.58 acres. Um, Item number 101, BL 2022-1157 by Council Member Swope. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R40 to SP zoning for properties located at 5617, 5621, and 5625 Valley View Road, approximately 545 feet south of Old Hickory Boulevard. Permit 12 multifamily units in the companion bill, BL 2022-1158 by Swope. An ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1157 proposed 
specific plan zoning district located 5617, 5621, and 5625 Valley View Road. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials restricted in the construction of buildings. Uh, BL 2022-1159 by Council Member Roberts. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IRDSP zoning for properties located at 1101-1111, 63rd Avenue North, approximately 90 feet southwest of New York Avenue. It's 11.15 acres. Permit a mixed-use development, and the companion bill is BL 2022-1160. Ordinance authorized building material restriction requirements. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1101-1111, 63rd Avenue North. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. That's also by Council Member Roberts. Uh, next one is BL 2022-1162 by Council Member Evans. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a, a portion of the plan unit development located at 3887 Central Pike, approximately 175 feet west of Central Court, 3.11 acres, zone CS. And the last one on the consent, Bill 2022-1167, item number 108, Sledge and Taylor, ordinance approving a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County and the National Soccer Club for part of a parcel property at 1441 12th Avenue South in Nashville. Anything needs to be bumped off of that consent calendar for third reading. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. I just had a question. I have a, an amendment um, on... 1162, I believe. And that, did you say said 1161 was on consent? Do they both need to go together, I guess is my question. Let's see, 1162, we have the amendment on 1161. Okay. And we, we went ahead and proved 1162, um, but we'll go back to 1161 and let you put the amendment on. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Anything else needs to be bumped off? All right. Councilmember Withers, you're the star. <laughs> You've got them all. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and considered ordinance numbers BL 2021-854, 1107, 1114, 1136, 1137-1138, 1139-1143, 1144-1145, 1147-1148, 1148, 1149, 1150, 1151, 1153-1157-1158, 1159-1160, 1162-1167, oh, I'm sorry, 1162, I think was the last one that we had, and we recommended approval, I would like to move to approve the consent calendar. You got it, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion on bills on third reading consent? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Um, the motion to approve all bills on third reading consent passes. <clears throat> okay, we just got a couple more. Uh, Item 82 can be taken with item 83, BL 2022-1100 by Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by amending a specific plan for properties located at 5754 River Road and River Road unnumbered, approximately 750 feet west of Charlotte Pike, zone SPR40 and R80, 16.47 acres, to add 5.9 acres to the SP and permit 160 multifamily residential units. And BL 2022-1101 by Rosenberg, this is the companion bill, proposed specific plan zoning district Located at 5754 River Road and River Road Unnumbered. Uh, proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilman Rosenberg is not here, so both these bills will be deferred one meeting. Okay. Okay, next item up is um, uh, item number 93. BL 2022-1146 by Councilmember Taylor in Syracuse. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying a historic landmark overlay district for a portion of property located at 2208 Ellison Place, northern, northern corner of Ellison Place in Louise Avenue, zone CS.19 acres. Councilmember Taylor, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, committee reports. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. My notes reflect that we uh, recommended a two meeting deferral, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Taylor, you recognized. Thank you. This uh, will need a two meeting deferral to track with the companion bill. All right, so the motion is to defer two meetings properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Okay, the motion to defer. Uh, next one up is uh, item.
item number 100, BL 2022-1154 by Council Member Taylor, uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing from MUIA to SP zoning for property located at 1705 Hay Street, approximately 100 feet west of 17th Avenue South, to permit a maximum 295 multifamily residential, 345 hotel units, and 2,500 square feet of restaurant. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you. Committee reports, please. Uh, I've got planning and zoning, Council Member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Planning and Zoning Committee met and considered BL 2022-1154. There is an amendment, and we recommended approval of the amendment, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions, and the ordinance as amended, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Okay, thank you, Councilman Withers. Councilman Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to move the amendment. All right, Council Member Taylor has moved the amendment on BL 2022-1154, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Yeah, thank you. This is uh, the 1705 Hay Street uh, property. We had some folks come up and, and talk about it and, and voice their concerns. Uh, I met with them um, after that meeting between second and third, as I promised. Um, and, and some of the amendments, uh, when, when I took a ride around the area, one of the things I noticed is that there's a current building being built and what happened there's a lot of construction workers that are parking on site and on public uh, right of ways and, and so one of the things in this amendment is to uh, require off-site private parking uh, for construction of this building uh, following completion of this building um, they will have to repave the roadway uh, between 17th and 18th Avenue North also uh, curb gutter and sidewalk upgrades um, along uh, Hay Street and then finally, um, the property owner is to conduct a roadway safety audit um, uh, for this area. All right, so that's the explanation of the amendment. Uh, Council Member Taylor has moved the amendment on BL 2022-1154 and properly seconded. Discussions on the amendment, Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. My uh, request is for the bill itself not. Okay. All right, um, I've got people in the queue. Council Member Cash on the amendment? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, at the at second reading um, two weeks ago, I uh, expressed some concerns about uh, the bill. And I think uh, Council Member Taylor's amendment uh, really makes it better. Uh, it's an SP and I think, you know, SPs, we can be very specific in things rather than up zoning. And it sounds like um, the, the He's gotten some things for the infrastructure near the development or for some of the situation that might develop as construction takes place, and I think he's made the bill a lot better. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member. Anybody else on the amendment? Seeing none, ready to vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment's adopted. So, uh, Council Member Taylor, you're now on your bill, BL 2022-1154, as amended. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval as amended. Okay, so Council Member Taylor has moved to pass BL 2022-1154, as amended on third reading, properly seconded. Discussion, Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I'm standing as um, a representative of the constituents that I serve as well. And by no means am I um, standing to go against the councilman and, and what he's trying to do in his district. But as we've heard pretty much all this evening of how our constituents want to be heard, and, and I know that um, we, we, we received emails after emails and, and people indicating that they have a petition because they don't think that they've had an opportunity to be heard as it relates to this particular um, uh, bill. And, and many of them are new because they said that, that um, they've been moving in you know, every week, every month since October of 2021. So the list that had gone out to talk about uh, this particular development, they were not on the list. So uh, I spoke to the councilman and asked him if he would consider deferring it and give these individuals an opportunity to be 
heard. And not only that, but explain to them what's happening, just like the amendment, which we know that it's a better bill because of the amendment, but just offering an opportunity for them to be heard. I um, recall that this occurred during my first term with another council member, and um, we ended up having a meeting outside and we had a mediator from another council member. And I think that's the purpose of the council member at large is to be able to, to speak or to offer some kind of assistance to the district council members in situations like this. So I, I know that we on a, on a um, motion to move, but I actually wanted to offer uh, a motion to defer just so we could make sure that those residents understood what was going on and why. When I asked the councilman, would it hurt anything? He said it really would not hurt if we did defer it, but uh, I guess it's his prerogative to move it forward. So I don't know what would be the appropriate procedure for me to ask for a deferral or if I could not. Um, you can move to defer just to a, a date certain. Okay, so I'd like to move to defer. All right, uh, but, but how long do you want to defer to? Oh, just one meeting. Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. We're now on a motion to defer one meeting, okay? Uh, I've got people in the queue, but I think they were there to talk about the bill. Um, so let me do hands. Anybody want to talk about the motion to defer one meeting? Councilmember Taylor, be recognized. Thank you, yes. Um, you know, w we had a chance to have a meeting with the individuals um, uh, between second and third reading. Uh, we had about 30 or so people uh, that came out to the meeting. It was a, uh, it was a, unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of time to, to get it done, but was able to fit it into our schedule and had a lot of uh, individuals came out. And with the amendment, I think we've done some great work uh, in regards to what I've heard in that. And when I play it back and watch it, um, these amendments answer a lot of the questions. One of the questions it doesn't answer is the height of the building. Um, and, uh, and and I think we discussed that uh, very well at the last meeting, uh, that this is appropriate density in this part of town. Um, but it answers a lot of the questions in regards to traffic and calming the traffic and um, effects of construction and thereafter. So um, colleagues, I'd ask you to not defer this and, and go ahead and move the bill. Okay, thank you, council member. Uh, Others on the deferral motion. Councilmember Hancock. I really appreciate the effort that Councilmember Taylor has put forward to amend the bill. <clears throat> I don't know if the constituents that have been emailing us the last few days um, know about that amendment. Um, and I think it would be helpful for them to know about that. And um, my, my biggest concern, I guess, about all these emails is they're all, you know, saying that we're violating their due process. And I'd like to hear from um, Director Darby to see if, if she believes that to be the case. And, and I also would just kindly like to say that if it doesn't hurt to defer one meeting, um, and we all agree that these are excellent amendments, then and what would it hurt to defer one meeting and share those excellent amendments with these constituents and, and let them know that they've been heard? Ms. Darby. Um, I believe at the last meeting or at the, uh, the, the public hearing where this matter came up, um, the planning department personnel um, advised the council about the notices that were mailed out and um, advised the council that all of the proper notices had been mailed out um, in the time that they were required to be mailed out to the people that they were required to be mailed out to. So um, it, it would appear that notice, uh, notice requirement has been met um, and then persons had the opportunity to be heard when they came to speak um, to, they had the opportunity to be heard before the planning commission as well as the public hearing that was held at this meeting. So it would seem that their um, due process had been, has been met. Councilor Brown Hancock, anything else? Oh, okay. Anybody else on the deferral motion? Councilor Member Benedict? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, and uh, to all of my colleagues, I really respect the work that we do. And as a district council member, um, I, I, I know that 
I know my district, I think, better than anybody else in this room. And although, um, um, and so I would just ask that, uh, I think that Council Member Taylor knows his district. I think he listens to his people. He responds to his constituents. And I trust that when he brings something before us and asks us to pass it, that he's vetted that in the community. Um, and I do think that, you know, we've heard from the community, he's made adjustments in the community. And so my, I would hope that this body, when a district council member brings something that we um, honor, not, you know, honor their request and that we, um, um, you know, recognize that they know what's happening in their district more than others. I've found um, Councilman Taylor to be a man of integrity and I cannot imagine that he would bring anything before us that would not be good for his community. So with that, I would um, uh, ask my colleagues, just as the sponsor asked, to not defer this and um, I believe probably to pass the bill without this uh, deferral. Thanks. All right, thank you, Council Member. Anybody else on the deferral motion? Yeah, Council, Council, Council Member Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. But colleagues, please understand that this is not about the Council Member. This is uh, speaking on behalf of the constituents, the same constituents that voted for all of you, voted for all of the council members at large. And we feel a responsibility to them as well. So please don't relegate this to being about a council member at large going against a district council member or not honoring or not disrespecting. I think our role here is to respond to our constituency. So I appreciate that and I respect the work that each of you do as I hope you all respect the work that each of us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on the de deferral motion? Council member Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm going to rise also in opposition to the deferral motion. I think Council Member uh, uh, ta uh, Taylor's done a great job uh, finding some good accommodations that uh, I think, to Council Member Cash's point, address some of the safety concerns that sometimes we have when we have a lot of construction going on in uh, un congested areas such as Midtown. I think that's very good. But I think beyond that, um, if the concern of the neighbors is the height of the building, that's not going to change in this legislation. Um, frankly, if the matter were to go back before the Planning Commission, I can't speak for what the Commission would say uh, in that case. However, uh, I just don't feel like we're going to end up with a different result uh, in terms of the, the height and density of this particular project, particularly since, uh, as has been reiterated numerous times, the Midtown area is an area that is designated to have uh, higher density, to have a greater height, uh, to support um, a walkable community. We do have, we don't have the AMP, that never happened, materialized, but we do have very uh, consistent and frequent service on the Broadway bus that's there. So that is about the best kind of transportation that, that we have at least immediately before us today. And the Planning Commission did recommend approval of the building with these dimensions, uh, with the infrastructure that we have in place today. So I just don't see that the deferral motion would produce any kind of a different result in terms of building height, uh, which, has been the major point that the neighbors raised. So I would speak for that reason in opposition to a deferral um, tonight and hope that we pass this bill today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, council member. Anybody else on the deferral motion? Okay, we'll try this by voice vote. Um, we're gonna, um, um, what we have before us is a motion to defer one meeting. Uh, it was properly seconded. So if you're for the deferral, you'll vote yes. If you're against it, you vote no. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Uh, I believe the no's have it. All right, so we are back on uh, Council Member Taylor's motion to approve BL 2022-1154 as amended for passage on third and final reading. Uh, discussion on the bill. I've got people listed, but uh, I think it was, uh, I think Council Member Swope is actually next. Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Previous question. All right, so Council Member Swope has called the previous question. Uh, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are voting on BL 2022-1154. 
We'll try this by voice vote first. All those in favor of BL 2022-1154 as amended for passage on third reading say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Bill passes on third and final reading. Okay. Um, we're now on um, item number 105, BL 2022-1161 by Council Member Evans. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CS to SV zoning for property located at 3887 Central Pike, approximately 125 feet west of Central Court and located within a plan unit development overlay district. 3.11 acres permit up to 112 multifamily units. Council Member Evans, you're recognized. Thank you, I have an amendment. Okay. I'd like to move the amendment. Uh, we got a committee report in oh, first. I'd like uh, to have my committee report. There you go. <laughs> Councilmember Withers, you recognize planning and zoning. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning and zoning met and considered ordinance BL 2022-1161 as well as the amendment and recommended in favor, recommended approval of the amendment, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions, and uh, approval of the bill as amended, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, Council Member Evans, you're recognized on your bill. Thank and you, your I would like to move my amendment, please. Okay, so Council Member Evans has moved uh, her amendment to BL 2022-1161, properly seconded explanation of the amendment. The, uh, uh, amendment basically just adds a couple of conditions that the uh, surrounding property owners have agreed to okay. with the developer. So you've heard an explanation. Anybody have any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's on. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you. I would like to move my bill, please. Okay, so BL 2022-1161 as amended. Uh, the motion is to pass on third and final reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of BL 2022-1161 as amended uh, on third and final reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill passes on third and final reading. All right, uh, last bill up tonight is item number 107, BL 2022-1165 by Syracuse and Benedict. Ordinance to amend uh, section 10.60.020, other metro code of laws pertaining to alarm permit fees. Uh, newly wedded council member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I regret that I have to break the rules, three of them. Uh, and so I move to suspend the rules and with an explanation if you need. Um, okay, so um, uh, tell me, what, what, are you sus what are you suspending? He's got a late filed amendment. Okay, that's the one I hadn't seen yet. Okay, so uh, did that go before um, the rules committee? <laughs> we got a quorum. I think we're checking. I want to pass this. Uh, we're counting quickly. I'll go quick. I promise. Did this one go to the rules committee? It it did not. That's it should another, have. It was not on thing. the agenda. Okay. So I need to break, uh, suspend that rule. Plus, I need to suspend rules. Uh, We're good to go. Okay. So you need to suspend the rules for certain reasons to get this a late filed amendment before the body. Correct. Okay. Including not going to the rules committee. Well, I was. I'm on the rules committee. It just administratively was not on the agenda. Okay. So. Got it. Okay. So uh, Council Member Syracuse is asking that uh, is moving to suspend the rules to get um, whatever rules are needed to get this amendment on this tonight. is a this is a friendly amendment from uh, friendly the codes amendment. department okay yes. um, anybody have any objection to suspension of the rules seeing none rules are suspended whatever they were and you're on your amendment thank you vice mayor so this uh, this is a friendly amendment from the codes department that basically changes uh, uh, it, this legislation to say that the renewal is due on or before the end of the month in which the permit is issued instead of initial permit is issued so it's 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 administrative uh, efficiency uh, per the codes department that they requested this so i move Passage of the amendment. Okay, so uh, Council Member Syracuse has moved passage of the amendment for BL 2022 1165. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Amendments adopted. Council Member Syracuse, you're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move approval as amended with a brief explanation. Okay, so he's got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Back to you. Thank you so much. So we're gonna end this one on a little of a tearjerker note. So I had an elderly constituent that reached out to me and said, I did what I was supposed to do. I got my permit, my alarm permit, cost me $20, did this in March, but per the rules, all permits for alarm permits uh, renew uh, uh, April 1. 
So this poor old lady had to pay $20 in March and then another $20 in, in April. So I said, ma'am, I'm gonna mail you a $20 uh, Kroger gift card and I'm gonna try to fix this. So I did that and so this is fixing this, this alarm permit uh, process that basically just uh, aligns it to be uh, just like your car tags. So whatever your day is, uh, your first of the month in which that you renew it, um, that's when you come back up for renewal. So this, is, uh, this was welcomed by uh, the codes uh, department and so it improves their process as well. Thank you so much, move approval. All right, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. We're voting on bill 2022-1165 as amended for passage on third and final reading. All those in favor of the bill say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Bill as amended passes on third and final reading. I believe that's it. Remember, um, next um, a week from tomorrow is a state of Metro address. 10 o'clock, Southeast uh, Nashville Community Center. Motion to adjourn. Got a motion, properly second. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. So the council has concluded about a two, a three hour and 45 minute meeting starting at 6.30 uh, and in about a quarter of 10. Um, the council uh, had an agenda that was 40 pages long and brought about 108 pieces of legislation. Uh, began the evening by uh, electing Lauren Riley to be the new Metro Auditor. She'll be serving an eight year term. She was uh, the number one candidate uh, of the audit committee that uh, interviewed all the candidates that were interested in it. Uh, she's already been serving a partial term in this area. She was very, very well uh, thought of, and again, the, the vote tonight by the council to elect her to that position for an eight-year term was unanimous. In resolutions, the council approved RS-22-1451 and 1452 uh, uh, that would authorize, one would authorize the purchase of the now shuttered Hickory Hollow and Global Crossings Wall facilities out in Antioch. The second resolution would uh, allocate $46 million in general obligation bonds to finance the effort. Uh, required space would be used as a community arts center and for other undetermined city services, as well as a large medical facility through the lease with the Vanderbilt Medical Center. The lease is still being negotiated and that bothered some council members tonight along with not having a number of questions they couldn't have answered or couldn't get answered about this tonight. So, so there was some uh, uh, opposition to it and some disdain for it. Several, as I said, seven, seven council members total uh, abstained on both those bills and uh, six voted against it. Um, at this point, uh, the, the matter will move forward, although I suspect there'll be other legislation coming into the council to deal with this in the future. Council deferred tonight placing uh, four amendments on the uh, August ballot for the voters to consider that would change the Metro Charter, the city's constitution. We won't go into what those four are. The council did make some preliminary housekeeping amendments to them. We will tell you that when these four amendments come back up again uh, at the next council meeting, all four of them must individually and collectively receive 27 yes votes for approval. That's uh, a two-thirds vote of this body to go on the ballot. All four ballots, have, all four amendments, I should say, have already been approved by the city's Charter Revision Commission. Council also, also did approve the, the day and location of the annual State of Metro Address. Uh, Vice Mayor Cooper, Vice Mayor uh, Shulman mentioned that at the end of the meeting. This event is required by the Charter. The Charter is now being held this year. It will be 59 years. This, this year's will be held April 27th at 10 o'clock in the morning at the Southeast Community Center located out in Hickory Hollow Parkway in Antioch. Uh, it will be a part of a specially called Metro Council meeting. There will be nothing else on the agenda but the speech. Uh, the public is invited. It will be, I assume, televised on Metro National Network. In the areas of affordable housing, the Council approved a resolution that would authorize a million dollar grant from the Barn fund to the pathway lending for express purpose of providing weatherization assistance and energy efficiency improvements to housing units owned by qualified low-income individuals and families. Council also uh, approved a $50,000 grant from Metro's unappropriate fund balance to a nonprofit group, Music City Inc., for the purpose of restoring and rehabilitating the Elk Lodge on Jefferson Street. The lodge has been designated as a historic landmark. It was severely damaged in the March 2020 tornado when the lodge was known as Club Baron has hosted artists such as Jimi Hendrix, Little Richard, Ray Charles, B.B. King, Otis Redding, and others. Also, in terms of allocating American Rescue Funds, uh, the council allocated $260,000 tonight to carry out a study to identify strategies to help independent music venues across Nashville in recovery from the impacts of COVID-19 and other acute stresses. Other uh, resolutions approved by the council tonight uh, that involve pandemic recovery, including $1.6 million to 10 local profits for technical assistance, marketing and outreach to assist underserved small businesses in North Nashville and Southeast Nashville through the Nashville Small Business Recovery Fund. The council already allocated $20 million dollars for this and this this money that you saw allocated tonight the 1.6 will come from that. The council also approved uh, several resolutions to fund Metro Department
departments out of the 4% reserve fund. 17 departments got money to purchase equipment or make building repairs. But the resolution allocates, reallocates 14 million unspent funds from previous budgets to six different departments. And a third resolution all, all allocated 28 million dollars from undesignated fund balances to acquire 802 vehicles, including 134 electric vehicles. All these will meet replacement criteria for various metro departments. Council also approved a $20,000 grant coming from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control to fund various programs for sheltered animals and also uh, one to seek a half million dollar grant to continue enhance DUI enforcement and targeting distracted driving and seat belt enforcement that coming from the state of Tennessee. Memorializing resolutions including the legislature being asked to budget this year increase funding for film and television incentives in the state, resolutions supporting efforts to revive the Music City Music Council into a sustainable and effective initiative. Other resolutions supported the bid that Nashville is going to host the 2026 National League of Cities Summit here in Nashville, recognizes the month of May as Nurses Month and recognizes May 6 as Providers Appreciation Day. Also, there was a resolution uh, passed expressing appreciation of the employees of Nashville Electric Service by recognizing April 17, 2022 as Lineman Appreciation Day. Resolution, another resolution commemorates the 52nd anniversary of Earth Day coming up on April 23rd uh, here. At the, the resolution proclaimed it Earth Day here in Nashville and Davidson County. One late resolution of note uh, that was approved by the council would approve a grant application to the federal government for five million infrastructure funds to help plan and design the East Nashville Boulevard and bridge uh, over, over the bridge will go over the Cumberland River. The the improvements would be made over in East Bank. Uh, there was some uh, debate about this tonight. There were no no votes uh, about approving it, but there were about four or five abstention of, of other councilmen who say they feel their needs for infrastructure in their parts of town need to be studied as well. So one late ordinance that was approved on first reading tonight that would place a historic overlay on materials used on the famous exit in property uh, down in the Rock Block uh, in the Midtown area. Um, there are no plans at this point to. Uh, is exactly what's going to happen to change the exit in property currently, but uh, this is there to make a change. I understand this is with the owner's approval to put this in. This is going to be on second reading of the next council meeting. Also on second reading, the council uh, saw withdrawn a controversial measure requiring non-owner occupied short-term rentals to meet parking requirements of hotels. Another bill that would have set up the um, Metro Office of Housing and Homelessness uh, was deferred tonight. It was put back on after being indefinitely deferred. It'll be back on uh, at the meeting next at next meeting. Any bill that's been deferred indefinitely when it's put back on has to be deferred again and then put back on in the final meeting to be looked at and that'll be coming up again on the on the uh, uh, May 5th uh, meeting coming up. Also on second reading the council deferred the bill that would regulate construction noise further. There have been several of these bills called through. This is the latest one and the council wants to study this more. There's also a bill to make it illegal for a motor vehicle if the muffler noise or other exhaust is plainly audible within 75 feet of any point within a residential area. The, currently, the current standards is, has to be more than 200 feet away. Uh, the measure would be enforced by both Metro Police and Codes. There's also a bill that passed on second reading in the wake of high skyrocketing fuel costs. These would set up a master agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and Cargill Inc. for the purpose of stabilizing the debt expenses incurred to purchase gasoline and diesel fuel from Metro. There also has to be a report put online about uh, what, how this is going on in terms of how much has been how much has been pur purchased and used in a monthly basis on Metro's website. The council is now in recess until the 5th of May. That's a Thursday. Normally, the council meets on Tuesday, but since Tuesday, May 3rd is an election day, the council meeting has been moved to May 5th. We'll be here at that time to provide live coverage here from the council chambers. Until then, I'm Pat Nolan, and good night from the council chambers. Tonight's Metro Council meeting has been a public affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.